and 98. You're with Jeff Brooks. Joining me shortly will be John Emmington, and we are here the last Friday night football game of the season. The Cadillac Vikings are taking on the Traverse City Central Trojans for the outright Big North Conference Championship. Cadillac comes in 8 no. Traverse City Central is second in the Big North, would do nothing more than not Cadillac off the pedestal for the second straight year. Uh, tra Cadillac and Traverse City meet for the Big North Conference Championship, and Cadillac is on a roll, 8-0. They have been the team to beat. I think a lot of people were surprised this year with the Cadillac Vikings, thinking they were going to be a little down from the talent that they lost last year, but, you know, John, to tell you the truth, Cadillac Vikings have really stepped up this year and proven that uh, they are the program uh, in the Big North. Test, 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 test. Test, test, test. Test, 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 test. I can hear me, but not you. Test, test. Test, 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 test. Can you hear me? No. Test, test. You got me? 8-0 no. on the season. Andrew Remington set to kick off. John, you know, it's a special night here. Parents' night. Cadillac comes in 8-0. No. Chance for a big North Conference championship, and I think it's going to be a good one. Oh, baby, you couldn't write it up any better. Here's the kickoff. Nice long high kick. It'll be fielded at the 10-yard line by Traverse City Central. He's bringing it across the 20. Going to be met there oh. by a host of Cadillac Vikings. First on the scene is, I think, Keenan Cooper with number seven, Johnny Albert, 10, 40, in 33 or 43. Uh, let me switch places. 43. 43 Michael is going to be uh, Michael Holchip. And, uh, yeah. So all right, Cat, uh, Traverse City Central will take over first and 10 at their own 21-yard line. And uh, this is for the Big North Conference Championship. They either win it outright tonight or they share it with Traverse City Central. Yeah, the cool thing for the Vikings, you already got a, a share of that thing. Traverse City certainly wants to take uh, their share of it home with them tonight. So, all right, first handoff, inside handoff, a little trap play. Picks up maybe about three yards for the Trojans. Cadillac Vikings will bring up a second and seven. And that's one thing Cadillac uh, this year uh, I think surprised a lot of teams. Their defense has been really stout. Yeah, it's, uh, been a, it's, it's been a stellar performance week in and week out this year for the Cadillac Vikings on the defensive side of the ball when you got, um, you know, as you talked about, loss of size. But, but on the line, those guys have just played phenomenally, especially between the tackles. There hasn't been a whole lot left let go all year long, and certainly that was the case last week against Manistee. Yeah, and the defense obviously led by T.J. Baker. They're going to throw the ball out deep. They have a guy, and the pass is not complete. He had... You know, I, I don't know a whole lot about number 11, Sean Williams. Uh, he had the receiver deep if he would have threw it out, but he kind of threw it out to the outside shoulder. They picked a little bit on Jake Ellens, which I don't know if you really want to do that because he's probably a first-team all-conference selection at the cornerback position. Yeah, there's no question he's the best cornerback on our team, and he's probably at, at least in the top five of the conversation in the Big North and maybe in all of northern Michigan. But uh, they might have saw a tendency, you would think, with play number two on their script. It was something that they saw and they wanted to go to, and maybe Jake likes to crowd the line of scrimmage a little bit, and they were trying to take advantage of that. So it's third and five with 11 minutes left. It looks like a pitch out there to the scat back. Not nah. much going on there. Oh, he reverses field. Not a whole lot. Oh, he might get outside. They're going to get a flag. A block in the back. He gets pushed out of bounds finally by T.J. Baker. But, yeah, there's going to be a block in the back, or there's going to be a holding out there on the edge, and that's going to back Traverse City Central up another 10 yards. Traverse up. City players on, on the ground here on our sideline. Uh, looked like he was hurt at the end of the play. Uh, but this one is definitely going to come back. Nice job by their running back to be able to escape out of all that pressure that he was under in the backfield. And, uh, I think this is probably going to be declined by the Vikings, I would guess. They don't need the five yards as much as... Yeah, the one thing I don't think Traverse City Central really wants to see is Ethan Campbell, who just came back from that suspension uh, last couple games. Uh, he's one of their best backs. He's on the he's on the ground. He's hurt. Uh, you know, he's a 100-yard rusher uh, for Traverse City Central, and that's something uh, they cannot afford to lose. Is that that's T.J. Shepard on the ground? That's right uh, that's Ethan Campbell. That's Ethan. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. A couple of the players that weren't able to play a little bit during the, during the season, but yeah, he's definitely one of their their top running backs, and you never want to see an injury. And I'm not sure he's he's a long ways out of bounds. It didn't look like there was any type of late contact to me on that play. I don't know if he landed weird when he, I didn't really when he got it. to the sideline, but um, 
the Vikings did decline that penalty. He's going to bring up a fourth down and yeah. about four yards to go. It's obviously an upper body injury. It's not a lower body, so uh, I don't know if maybe his head hit the ground or shoulder got jarred. But T.J. Yep. Baker, who's uh, you know probably first team All Conference linebacker, laid the lick on him out of bounds, and that's unfortunate. Well, he's he, up and he's okay. He's a tough kid. Good deal. And T.J.'s kind of nursing himself a little bit of an ankle ankle injury tonight he, that he was that he tweaked and. Uh, just it's taped up and he's going to tough it out. It's not a game where you, I think you'd have to be on a stretcher in order to not have him play this football game. So nice job by the Vikings to, to stop Traverse City Central in their tracks and bring up a fourth down and hopefully get the ball back here. Yeah, the one thing Traverse City does not want to get, they don't want to get in a foot race with us. Uh, they're, they're first three and out. Uh, if you leave this up to the offenses all night, Cat, uh, Cadillac will run you right off the field. Uh, Cadillac's offense is as explosive as I've seen in the last couple years, and they will put up 30, 40 points, and uh, you're either going to match it or you're going to ball control, and uh, that's probably something Traverse City doesn't want to do right now is turn the ball over to us after three and out. Yeah, certainly not a good good start for the Trojans the way that they would want it to, but nice for our Vikes, and here's Ethan and Jake back to receive this punt. So, all right. Nice spiral. Yep, the punt's going to be fielded by Jake Ellens, who's going to call for a fair Ooh. catch. Ooh, you got to throw the flag on that. Yep. 15 yards. So a fair catch call. Turn. He gets penalized by hitting them, and that'll give us another 15 yards. So we'll start our first possession inside Traverse City Central's field position at about probably the 45-yard line once they mark this off. And, you know, that's just something you can't give Cadillac. You can't give Cadillac a short field because they're going to no. make it pay because they mm -hmm. just have so many weapons from the running back position from Nate Houck, who... And then Michael Holchip, who's just been on a tear the last three weeks, like, what, 520 yards, eight touchdowns in three games. Uh, Webb decided to start giving him the ball the last few games, and I tell you, he's produced. Yeah, Michael Holchip is a phenomenal athlete, a phenomenal running back, a phenomenal defensive player on the football field. And, uh, man, he's really, really shown up and been productive here in the last three or four weeks. 42-yard so line. Shotgun formation for Lewis Finch. He's back to pass. He's looking for Ethan Myers out there in the flat. He picks up about 10 yards before he's knocked out of bounds there at the 30-yard line. So a nice little pass play. You know, Traverse City Central is laying off the corners or 10 yards deep. Uh, that's something that Jim Webb's really been doing well, uh, getting your receivers six, seven yards deep, doing that comeback route and forcing your cornerbacks to come up and play the game, and that's just what opens up the running game. Yeah, no question about it. The versatility at, at the wide receiver spot this year has uh, created just mismatches all over the place, and no, no different here tonight. I think Cadillac's coaches feel like they've got a definite advantage there. So handoff to Michael Holtzip around that right side. The battleship gets down to about a five-yard gain, six-yard gain. Uh, down to about the 25-yard line. you got to love it when you see the offensive linemen like Zeb nice Orsma shirt, huh? and, and uh, you know, Sam Denman and Matt Myers who just really anchor that offensive line. The senior leadership coming from that offensive line has just really helped this year for a running game. Yeah, no question. It's been a lot of years since, um, you know, Traverse City has dominated us the way they used to in the past, but that's, that's the type of offensive surge that you're used to seeing out of the white jerseys on the other sides and out of ours. It's nice to see. So Lewis Finch out there. Little bit underthrown to Jake Ellens. He had that little five-yard dive. Uh, you know, the coaching staff recognizes right away that I don't think the cornerbacks are going to be able to handle our two receivers, uh, especially the size of Jake Ellens and then the speed of uh, Myers, Ethan Myers. They're going to play that 10 yards off. We're going to, you know, we're going to pick them apart for five yards at a time. And T.J. Baker, I see, is going to split out. Michael Holdship, I doubt we're throwing left, but I'm pretty sure we got five receivers set. Shotgun wide, formation. A lot of times this will be Lewis keeping it up in the middle, but uh, a little bit of versatility out of this last week. And yep, jet formation. Oh, nice nice mature cut by, by Nate. Nate. How He's going to stop short. This yep. may be a field goal situation then if, uh, if Coach... That was a nice job by the Traverse City Central linebacker who actually stayed home, did not over-pursue. He stayed there. Nate make a mature cut. Uh, it's going to bring up a fourth and about three or five, four or four Cadillac. Jim's going to go for it, which I, yep. don't, I don't fault him for that at all. It'd be a field goal spot, certainly within Andrew's wheelhouse. It'd be about a eh, 25, 30, There's no a wind. I don't know. Yard. Be, That's be a big a, lift. Yeah, if, if it, well, it, it would be, but, but Jim's got a lot of confidence. These guys can get four yards, and uh, he wants to dial it up. And if you don't get it, you're not giving them great field position. So, All right, two back set. Lewis Finch and oh, shotgun and he got formation. Jump. This may be a, oh, no, they didn't throw no the flag. flag. They're, They're going for it all. Deep. Oh, and they oh. almost get it out there to There's Ethan no Myers. Flag. Wow. But uh, he must not have broke the plane, so that'll bring up the first down for Traverse City Central. They hold. That was such a big play. Uh, 
Uh, Jim's not happy. I don't know if he's not happy with his players or if he's not happy with the fish. Uh, there was definitely a lot of activity right before the snap of the ball, but they must not have, uh, as you said, lane. got into yep. the neutral zone. And just an unfortunate. It looked like Ethan had a little bit of space in the beginning. Lewis kind of under threw it. Ethan had to go up and wasn't to be. So t 75 yards to go, though, for the Traverse City Central Trojans. So, all right, Sean Williams, the floor general for Traverse City Central. Hands off, inside hand off, too. I think that's got to – is that Shepherdly? T.J. Shepherdly, I, th I think, was on the on the carry. Joe Shepherdly? T.J. was the older brother. I'm sorry, yep, yep. Joe, yep. Joe Shepherdly carries the ball. T.J. was such a great kid, great competitor. No, that was Campbell, 20. That was, that was, was it? Uh, okay, yep, so was he's 20. back in the game, so it's nice to see him come back from that little injury that he had. But uh, this is, you know, this isn't the Traverse City Centrals that you've seen of late, you know, with Max Sovereign and uh, those athletes that they've had. Uh, they've struggled out there on the edge most of the year uh, speed-wise, and that's uh, something you just have usually see from Traverse City Central. They've always been uh, a pretty proud, speedy back-type offense. Uh, they've always been pretty well in track, and right there they went to the air. They did not get it. That'll bring up third and long for Traverse City Central, and our defense is uh, looking pretty solid, John. Yeah, just outside of the grasp of that uh, that small receiver out there who kind of stretched his arms out the entire way to try to get that thing. If you look from here this far away that he may have hauled it in, but it went off the top of his fingertips and out of bounds. Going to bring up a third and long. Yeah, so with this win tonight, Cadillac's looking at two home games for the playoffs, something that's going to be nice home cooking for the Cadillac Vikings if they can pull off a victory tonight. Uh, they got one for sure. Actually, they probably got two even if they lose, but they, uh, they might be able to pick up a third if they win tonight, uh, and that's something Jim Webb's probably looking for. In a, it's a draw, it's a draw play, too. Campbell right there, and he had some daylight, but that's the difference between turf and grass. You can't make those cuts. It's a little tougher, and uh, that's going to bring up fourth and about six or seven for the Traverse City Central, and they're going to have to punt it away. Yeah, it's gonna, it's, it seems to be setting up a little bit. You know, you've got two teams offensively that are kind of, I don't want to say feeling each other out a little bit, but they're, you know, they're 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 running their stuff. They're they're not afraid to run it. They're not afraid afraid to pass it. They're going to spread people out. But right now, it just looks like everybody's a little bit on edge and a little bit, um, you know, they're they're not uh, there's not a whole lot of rhythm and flow to either offense right now. And the first team that can get this thing in gear and and right the ship and get just everybody on the same page is going to have an advantage getting on the scoreboard first. So Jake Ellen is going to let that bounce. It's going to go down to maybe about the 31, 32 yard line where Cadillac will take over. With the Lewis Finch led offense, first and 10, 7:51 left in the first quarter. And like I said, I think I think the grass field plays a part in it. Uh, uh, I know Traverse City plays quite a few opponents and other people on natural turf. They do play in the Big North on natural grass, but uh, it's you know it's a different field, it's a different cut, and you just got to get used to it. Yeah, yeah, no question about it. The uh the, the one thing that we don't really have to deal with tonight is a whole lot of weather. There's not a whole lot of wind. There's not any rain. What is what are we 22 lined up in the neutral zone. Already in Defensive there. back Already was uh, lined up over the 30-yard line, so that's going to be a five-yard penalty on the defensive back for Traverse City Central. That'll be a first and five for Cadillac. Two early penalties by the Traverse City Trojans, and this one is one that the, the Cadillac Vikings have to take advantage of. You know, that first 15-yard penalty was huge to get you across the 50-yard line. weren't able to punch it in. We didn't kick the field goal to try to get three early ones. you got to get some points on the board and take advantage of any early mistakes by a visiting Trojan team. So Lewis Finn shotgun hands off to Michael Holdship, the battleship right up the middle, right over the left side there of the line. Picked up, you know, about a couple yards. That's the one thing about Michael that, you, you know, it's it really positive yardage, Im isn't it? Impresses, yeah. impresses me. You know, he, he, you don't see a lot of negative yards from him. He, if he get hits, he's still going to drag a defender. He picks up one or two and just makes your life easier as a coach. Oh, his legs are tree trunks. He's tough to tackle. And, and that, which looked like a nice defensive play by the Trojans, still results in three and a half yards gain. So brings up second down and short. It's all right. Second and two for the Cadillac Vikings. Pistol formation, hand off to Nate Hout to scat back. Going to still pick up maybe a yard. Sam Denman pulled off there. Brandon Richards and did a nice job there with the push. Nate uh, squeezed through. He may have got the first down. And I mean, he might have. Yeah, he did. His stopped turning on that thing. I think he got all the way through there. Was that something that Nate, after he got through his injury, has been able to do here in the last few weeks is 
he's become a he's, a he's a power first runner he's kind of like reggie bush's for the lions in order to get his outside stuff he's figured out that he's got to run between the tackles tough first and then when those uh linebackers those outside linebackers those outside corners and safety start to commit to that then he's able to get his angles to get on the outside but it doesn't work always the other way around especially when you're playing fast teams like the traverse city trojans it's hard to get to the outside first so it's first and ten for the vikings shotgun formation two shot uh two uh running back set Lewis Finch is going to hold on to that right around the right side. He's not going to pick up a whole lot. Maybe get back to the line of scrimmage. It was a kind of a slow developing play. Well, was, uh, we were yeah. showing pistol to the right, and then we faked to the left. We kind of made, you know, we don't run that counter tray anymore, no. but that's our counter tray yep. is that, that, you know, fake power to the left, and, and Lewis came back, and the linebackers just did a good job, and so did number 73 for uh, Traverse City. Looked like there was a little just impatience in the timing there on the part of the Vikings. You know, Lewis probably wants to ride that handoff out a little bit further to let the, I don't think Traverse City was really off the line much by the time he had already pulled it out and committed to running right, and they really hadn't reacted to any of the play action stuff inside yet. Yeah, we're not throwing this ball because uh, Keenan Cooper's way too tight, or uh, Michael Holtzitz way too tight. He's going to block Lewis Finch back to pass. He's rolling out. He's got T.J. Baker sitting right there. He's looking. Oh, and he gets drilled out there by the weak side line uh, defensive end. Uh, Lewis Finch was in his rotation. He's a lefty. It's tough to run right to throw the ball back because Lewis has got to be one of those guys that really sets that shoulder. And uh, defensive play by Traverse City bring up third and long for the Vikings. Yeah, I'm not sure what the blocking assignment is for somebody to be left in there and take care of Lou's blind side, but also Lou's probably feels like that play needs to develop a little bit faster and get him across the field and get his hips the way that they need to be in the shoulders so that he can make that throw. But Yeah, he had TJ short early, but I think he was trying to go to that middle uh, hook button route and it just didn't transpire. So we got three receivers set down low, one up top. Lewis Finch in shotgun formation. Michael Holtship blocking. Lewis Finch back to pass. He's looking for... A little bit. He's going to have to scramble now. He's going to come around one. They're chasing him down. They're going to chase him down at the 40-yard line. He had nothing going on there. I think they were trying to set up a screen play for Nate Houck. It didn't happen. It's going to bring up fourth and long to the Vikings. They're going to have to punt it away. Nice job by Lewis to escape the initial pressure from the Traverse City Trojans. But, you know, your receiver's got to come back, and you've got to follow the path of the quarterback when you're out there and you, you look back and he's, he's having to scramble out to the right side. Everybody's got to come back and kind of take an angle where you can get within his vision and, and his ability to throw the ball to you. There was nobody around on that left side once Lewis started to scramble out there. He just had to take it out of bounds. So Michael Holdship will have to punt. I think Keenan Cooper is the long snapper for Cadillac. Yes, he yep. He's going to snap it too. Michael Holdship. And Holdship boots a beautiful look at it turn over. Wow. And it's gonna, he's going to knock it down. He's going to pick it up at the 12-yard line. We got guys uh, down there. Good coverage by Keenan Cooper, finally hauled down by the Cadillac Vikings, but a beautiful punt by Michael Holdship to pin Traverse City back at the 20-yard line where they will take over first and 10. And, uh, you know, this, is, this reminds me a lot of last year's football game up at Traverse City where Cadillac came in the favorite. Uh, personally, I believe you have a better football team in blue than you have in white. Uh, I've seen that in the first three series, uh, and I think it's just a matter of time before we get something going. But I tell you, Traverse City, they, they always play us tough, and uh, they come to play tonight. Well, they should play you tough. I mean, the, you know, I, I, I would guess throughout the, the series in, in history here, it's probably heavily weighted on Traverse City's side just because of the size of their school versus the size of ours. But, uh, you know, the record on, on Blue's side and the, the common opponents that they've had this year and the scores and all that stuff would indicate that Cadillac is probably a little bit stronger this year. But at some point in time, you've got to rise up and you've got to make that happen on the field. And Traverse City's excited. They're the team that's got a little bit more pressure on them, I think, tonight than, than the Cadillac does. Regardless of what happens, both teams have a bigger game next week than they have tonight. But Cadillac's already secured that, that share of the Big North, so the only thing left to play for is really kind of a, a perfect season and beating your big brother that has always kind of bothered you up to the north. And, and so, so Traverse City's the one that really probably feels a little bit more pressure than the Vikes do tonight. So not a whole lot going on there for Ethan Campbell, number seven. Johnny Elbert stayed home. 20 tried to shake and bake, but the corner stayed home. But there's one thing that I've really noticed the last four offensive uh, uh, plays for Traverse City, and I want to make note of it, is they're putting two hats on T.J. Baker right now. They're bringing two offensive linemen off the line, if you watch, and they're hitting T.J. Baker. They're trying to take him out of the game. Uh, and that's, that's smart as a coach because T.J. Baker has done very well 
as far as tackles. He's led the team in tackles for the last two years, and they're you know they're trying to they're trying to neutralize that right now. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you can neutralize the best tackler that's been on, in your program, uh, the only the only problem with that is now you're putting two hats on him. At least somebody else open, and you've got a, you've got some depth on on our side of the football. Um, where if you're going to commit two guys to there, who are, who are you not going to block? You, you know, you can't leave guys like John Durga and, and Sam Denman. You can't leave Dominic Cataldo. You can't leave whoever's in there at the time, Ethan Myers. Um, the list kind of goes on and on, but those guys are going to take up some slack. So if you're going to commit two, our guys have shown, you know, they're going to fill they're going to fill that spot pretty quickly and find the football. Yeah, what, what unsung heroes in, you know, Hunter Smaker and mm-hmm. uh, Brandon Richards? Uh, those guys have done, I mean, Brandon Richards, if you look back at his career, uh, he comes up through the ranks as a quarterback. Obviously, he does not have the body style of a quarterback. Yep. Uh, he played quarterback because he filled a need. But that tells you the type of athleticism he has. Hunter Smaker, who's just kind of a physical specimen in my mind, if you, if you just look at his size. And then Johnny Elberts is one of those defensive backs that have come in over the years, just like you know your Tommy Cathins and your Aaron Wilkinsons, who's just kind of shined and uh, come to the forefront of senior year. you got guys on this team that are unsung heroes that are just playing a part and in, in, in a huge role, and that's why Cadillac has been, you know, are, are going for number 18 consecutive mm-hmm. regular season victories is because of those guys. I, you know, I know your Lewis Finches and your Nate Houks and all those guys and uh, play a big part of that too, but I tell you, the, the program is built on more than just one or two or three guys. It, it's it's 11, 22 guys, and then everyone sitting on the bench. And there's no doubt about it that you're exactly right. That the guys that are not preseason game planned for by opponents in our league um, are the are the ones who have made a huge huge difference this year. Um, the guys that you've already mentioned and Jake Ellens, I know he's just been such a surprise to so many other people out there. Not so much to us because we've always kind of seen it coming, but. Uh, there, there's there's a lot of talent at the younger depths. Oh, they set up the screen. That's a hold, camp. fellas. That's yep. a hold. And they don't and see it. Called. They did hold wow. Ethan, or they did held T.J. Baker out there, and Todd Baker's right now giving the official an earful. But, yeah, T.J. got held out there. But they're going to hold him short two or three yards of the first down, and it's going to force a Traverse City Central punt because, to tell you the truth, I think they're pretty happy with a 0-0 game with 3.57 left in the first quarter. Well, I, I I don't know about that. I mean, I, I know that uh, Traverse City Central coming into this game knows it's an absolutely winnable football game for them, and it is. I mean, you've got two teams that are fairly evenly matched. You know, Traverse City's only lost, came to, to Petoskey in our league, and Petoskey was, was on an emotional high that night from some things that had happened in their school and maybe played a, a little bit better than they played against Cadillac when Cadillac played them, but... Um, their only other loss is to a big downstate team, and, and they're a good football team, and they, they know they can win this game. So I don't know how happy they're going to be with anything but a victory here tonight. And Cadillac knows that. And if, at, at some point in time here, one of these teams is going to assert their will offensively, and it's going to put the other team, whoever scores first is going to put the other team in kind of a pickle. I mean, they're, they're just going to, there's going to be a huge uh, weight that's, that's shifted to the shoulders of, of whatever team did not score first because you, you're getting into that kind of a game right now where Cadillac's not used to punting. I don't think Traverse City's that used to punting, and so far they've had to they've had to give it up on fourth down a couple of times. So let's see if the Vikes can mount a charge here about 55 yards, 56 yards, and going in the end zone. So they start on their 34-yard line, ace-back formation, shotgun. Michael Holtship behind Lewis Finch, who's been a workhorse. they got a jet formation going, and Nate Houck, they hand it off to Michael Holtship up the middle. The battleship rumbles for about seven yards before he's hauled down there by the secondary. The safety has to come up and make the hit. And I tell you, if the safety is going to have to start making hit, hits on Michael Holtship, who's the number five rated player in the Lake Michigan football report for honorable reasons, uh, it's going to be a long night for Traverse City. I love, love, love that action by the Vikings where you get some jet sweep formation and sometimes you give it to Nate and sometimes you don't. and It just puts so much pressure on your outside linebackers and, and just freezes the guys in the middle just enough. All Michael needs is about a foot of space to work with. So T.J. Baker in motion. Battleship shows his strength there, fighting off defender after defender. He's going to rumble down to a round inside Traverse City Central's but it was a nice block there by the offensive line. It was a nice seal block by T.J. Baker as he was scraping across. And uh, Cadillac Vikings, they're in business. First down and 10 at the Traverse City Central 47-yard line, and they're putting pressure right now on Traverse City. They are. I think uh, 75, I think that's Zeb Borsman in there. I want to give him some credit for staying on that block. Even his guy was kind of had a stunt uh, blitzing across the line of scrimmage on a slant right in front of him, and he stayed on that block just long enough. Not Didn't get a huge hit on him, but just occupied him a little bit to let Michael get around that corner. Otherwise, that, that could be a loss. 
So pistol formation. Nate Houck in the backfield. Michael Holtzip going to lead block. He's going to pitch it out to Nate Houck. And it almost looked like he was going to throw the ball. But well, uh, that is a what, legal I, procedure on I, Cadillac. Is, did Ethan move out there, or what was that? I'm not sure, but it's a legal procedure on Cadillac. It's going to wow. back him up five yards. Yeah, that's just, we can't do that. We cannot do that. So that will back us up about five yards. Uh. But one thing that I'd like to see us start doing a little better is Ethan Myers has a lot of talent. He has a lot of talent returning punts. And I thought that last punt, I know it's three minutes ago, but that last punt, he had some room to take that ball. I He's remember been real watching, conservative on punt returns. You're right. I remember yeah. watching Jay Carell. Dude, that kid was ballsy. Yeah. He, yeah. he would pick stuff Catch up. Catch it on the fly a yep. little bit. And, and, yeah. I, and, I, and Ethan has that talent. And I, in the playoffs, I, I hope he uses that talent. So hand off to Nate Houck, a little scat back, and nice job. He stays on his feet. He's still running. Finally, the outside linebacker. But I tell you, 73 did a nice job reading the play. You know, he stayed on the line of scrimmage. You just didn't bring him down, but he held Nate up long enough for a minimal gain of about five yards to bring up second and 10 or 11 for the Vikings. Nice job. He was finally drilled there by, uh, I think it's Daniel Yelker, Yelker, or however you pronounce that, for Traverse City Central. But... Yeah, Nate turned uh, nothing into about a five, four and a half, five yard gain right there, which got back that yardage from the costly penalty on first down. So, but uh, going back to what I was talking about, I mean, we have two really dangerous returners and mm-hmm. and Jake Ellens and Ethan Myers, and I'd like to see us start being a little more aggressive. Yeah, we do need to get more out of that out of the return game. So, Lewis Finch looking to pass out to Jake Ellens. Nice reception out there, and finally gets hauled down, but not before a first down. So Lewis Finch looked off the defensive back, came back to Jake Ellens on that 10-foot route, or uh, I'm sorry, 10-yard route, and a first down for the Cadillac Vikings, and we're moving the chain. Love the versatility. I love the, the just the change-up that, that Coach Webb is throwing at him here a little bit. And just some different looks. That's some action in the backfield that we haven't seen a whole lot of with Nate kind of scurrying out to the left side of Lewis. And, ooh, there's a little bit of a muff snap, but Lou's going to make something out of it. Yeah, you know, Jake Ellens, I... <laughs> You know, I don't know what to say. I, I, in my book, from the games I've watched, he's a first-team DB, Big North, and he's a first-team wide receiver. He's the best defensive back that I've seen in our league. There's no question about that. And, uh, yeah, between he and Ethan, I mean, if they're not one and two as far as receivers go in the Big North, they're, they're pretty close near the top. I mean, they're both tough, tough kids. And Jake, Jake's toughness probably shows a little bit more in Ethan's, you know, finesse and ability for yards after the catch and, um, athleticism and making a catch maybe shows a little bit more, but man, what a compliment to each other they are. So Nate Houck around that corner, he's going to be brought down around just across the 20 yard line, he's going to pick up another first down, but there's the speed I tell you, you get Nate Houck on natural turf and he gets faster. Oh yeah. Uh, so I tell you, come playoff time once we get off our grass and we get on turf uh, we're, we're a dangerous team all the way around on the edge uh, especially at the linebacker position where we, we're undersized a little bit, but we have a lot of speed. Yeah, and I love I love that we're uh, hurrying up here on offense a little bit, not letting Traverse City catch a breath. they got some bigger guys inside. And wow, nice job there by number 33. Oh, we got a fumble? Devontae oh, Walker. Gave Boy, gave Michael, that's his first fumble of the year, if that was Michael, and it was, but 33, Devontae Walker, uh, He's the one that caused, or Joe Shepherdly had to be big 32. Hit. It was a big hit, and uh, probably helmet right on the ball, or at least yeah. a hard, hard uh, stick with a forearm or a fist or something. But tough spot on the field to give that thing up, and the yep. bikes are driving. And um, man, costly, but you know it's it's the 18 yard line. Now the defense got to step back in. You got, like we said, it's two football game, two football teams that are good, confident in what they do. They got good athletes. They got strong kids, fast kids, and so far it's been pretty entertaining, even without a score. So shotgun formation for Traverse City Central. He's a little flare pass out there in the flat to Ethan Campbell, and he's going to pick up minimal yards, about two yards, but that's something I haven't seen so far yet of Traverse City Central. You know, Joe Shepley is such a presence running the ball, uh, big physical back. Uh, he hasn't had a ton of carries so far. No. I, I, I don't know if he's carried the ball yet. Uh, and as a sophomore, I tell you, when... Uh, Last year, I was impressed with uh, Shepherdly and, and the way he played. And, you know, I, I know his older brother real well, and I just, you're going to see Shepherdly here sooner or later. It's just, you just haven't seen him yet this game. 
Yeah, he'll get involved in the, in the game for sure, but, man, the collective team speed. There he is right there, yep. and he just ran wow. over the defensive lineman. I tell you, he's a load to bring down. He's a load, but nice job by the Vikes yep. to just stay home. That was a that was a, a, a lot of counteraction. You know, you heavily load up this side of the field, and the action starts to come this way to the quarterback, and those guys, nice job by those guys to stay home over there. I'm not sure who that was. If that was Hunter Schmaker over there maybe on that – uh, on the left side, and Dan McMurray. Well, you got Durga and, Durg, and Schmaker, yep. and you got T.J. Baker over there, who's, you know, like I said, he's probably in all Big North selection as linebacker position. Uh, but, but that's going to be the end of the first quarter, a 0-0 tie here in Cadillac. Just like last year, we're at a stalemate, and, uh, you know, it's going to be third and eight for the Cadillac Vikings. Uh, what a special two years Cadillac's had. Uh, a lot of people didn't, a lot of people thought there was going to be a lot of parity in the Big North Conference this year. You know, personally, John, I, I really didn't see it. You know, I thought Traverse City West was going to be a heck of a lot better than what they were. Uh, and I'm not sure what's going on up there in West Traverse. But uh, <laughs> on paper, they were the best team in my book. Well, it's you know, I, I think there was a lot of parity in our league, but I think you do have some different elements that come into play with each team. And, and I think on paper, and, and as I've seen them play on the field, one of the best teams in our league is one of the has one of the worst records, and that's Alpena. I mean, they just oh, yeah. they 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 have a lot of ways that they can beat you, and they just week after week it seems like find a different way to fumble away and lose football games. And it's um, a culture of winning. Well, it is, and that's what's been established here in Cadillac. Traverse City's had that for a long time with their rich, long football tradition, and. Uh, you know, Traverse City West of late has had a lot of hiccups up there, and you really don't ever, ever know what you're going to get year to year up there. Gaylord Strong and back, and Petoskey, you know, does their double wing thing, and they do it as well as anybody. So I, I think it's it's been a it's been a strong league. I don't I don't know that it's as top heavy. Uh, I don't think there's a great great team in the Big North, but the two teams that are playing tonight, I do think, are the two best teams in our league. They've shown that week in and week out. I agree. In, in, and uh, and they deserve to be playing for this thing tonight. And uh, we kind of got to back up a little bit because I came in late. We had the parents' night thing going on, and we were late getting here. But, yeah, to set this thing up, it's just it's crazy to think, you know, if we think back when we were coaching our kids in Pop Warner and where Cadillac's program was at that time, and if you'd have told us, hey, when your kids are going to be juniors and seniors in high school, they're going to be competing for things like Big North Championships and making deep runs in playoffs and things, and they're going to be playing on a Friday night for a, a, a second undefeated season in a row. We said we'll take that every single time, and it's, that's become reality, and it's just as they uh, make a huge stop there. Was that on third down? Yeah, the Cadillac speed is, I, you know, you're not going to see this until you get to the playoffs, but our speed on defense is as good. It's team speed, right? They, we have six. team speed, yep. and yep. we're undersized on the defensive line, but if teams aren't going to pound us, it, see, that was the thing with Traverse City West. They decided not to pound us. Yep. And if they wanted to sit there and just pound us, they could, but they just can't force themselves. We, our team speed is as good as anybody that I've seen in the last – you know, even with Harrell and Ellsworth yep. and Silvers. and uh, I think in the beginning of the year, teams did try to pound it, and, and they were successful in pounding it, but the problem became if they couldn't stick it all the way in the end zone, uh, get away from that ball, fellas, if they couldn't stick it all the way in the end zone and, w and one little mistake happened or you didn't happen to get it on fourth down, our offense is so potent that now you're putting points on the board, and when, when you play that try to pound it and control the clock type of offense, it's tough when you're down a touchdown or two to stick with that and, I think that's what suffocated teams a little bit early in the year, and I think when you scout for that and you look at that on film, you say, "Oh, you know, we re we can we can make some hay between the tackles against Cadillac because of their size deficiencies and things like that." But how are we going to win the whole football game? That. Yeah, they did, and and uh, you know, having watched that game, watched every every game and every down this year, I, I think that was as much on our side as it was on on Gaylor's side. They played a heck of a football game, but that was not our best effort that night and our our most focused effort for sure. So Lewis Finch again swallowed up there after three. Uh, uh, a gain of about three yards. Nice tough run by Lou. I don't want to see him take too many hits from the safety on free shots like that. Uh, 32, Shepley did a nice job of holding him up, and then the free safety came up and just laid the lick. Uh, I don't want to see Lou, especially knowing that you got at least two home games uh, in the playoffs, taking too many shots tonight, regardless of the Big North Conference Championship. Well, if we can get up to the line one of these times and get a quick out to, to Jake or whoever split wide out there, Traverse City slow to get themselves set defensively and and the pass out there to Ethan Myers. He's going to pick up the first down. So a nice job. Cadillac's got a, you know, they got something going on there with that little pass. Uh, you know, I don't know if the DBs are really as strong as what our receivers are. You've got to respect the, the speed. Yep. I mean, Ethan Myers is not a four flat 40 guy, but he's probably a four or five, you know, 40 guy. And Jake on the other side is too, but, but they're, they're not size. just skinny. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're strong guys. And so... Um, 
you know, you got to give them a little respect. You can't you can't go bump and run on them all the way up to the line of scrimmage every time because they will they'll go by you. They'll uh, and Lewis will find them when they do. So it's a tough thing. Kellick has got a lot of versatility to this offense, and uh, you know, it's Coach Webb is kind of like a kid in a candy store when it comes to being able to draw up plays and dial up stuff because. There's just a lot of things that can work when you got speed coming from two different edges, two different receivers that can catch it, a quarterback that can throw and run a little bit, and, um, and linemen that are that are committed enough to keep guys off of those guys in the backfield. That's I mean that's what you've got. You've got a ton of heart on that front line. Whatever they may lack in size, they make up for a lot in in just want to and uh, and effort and, and their willingness to get off the ball low and. So we hit an injury on the field, number nine, Matt Poopo. Uh, Nate Poopel's, uh, hopefully, I think he's brother probably. Uh, Nate so. and Jalen yep. were pretty good friends. But, uh, you know, the one thing about the Cadillac Vikings, and uh, this has been pretty prevalent the last three or four years, and I think it started with the Silvers uh, crew with Mike Weeks and, and those guys, but they really started a an, an essence of winning. Yep, uh, and they did it when they went up to Marquette and they won that first district. And that was uh, huge. That was a big breakthrough. I remember that with that weekend well, and and that was. And uh, I would even go back maybe a year or two before that when Mac McDonald's crew went up to Gaylord and won on the road in the first game of the playoffs after having lost to them in the regular season here, you know, just the week before, and uh, took up there on the road and pound that thing in at the end. I mean, that was. I think that was a corner kind of turning situation for the for the Vikings program and showed some guys at the younger levels that things can happen and then the crew that you just talked about going up to Marquette and doing what they did I mean that that started uh, guys getting in the weight room and buying in and and uh, then right around that time too there was the change in the way that we approached our stuff offensively from a veer offense and kind of a vanilla pound it type thing to to be able to do some things with some athletes and so oh baby he may go he's at the he 20, go. At the 10. Yeah, baby! Cadillac! Lewis Finch takes it in. Everyone over-pursued to the left. Lou saw it. He broke it back right. And you don't need a ton of speed when you got the break on that and everyone's over-pursuing Cadillac for their first touchdown. That might be... That might be the momentum right there, John. It just gets us rolling. Well, we, I mean, we've scored a lot of touchdowns this year. We've put up as many points as, as teams that I've ever seen. That may be the biggest touchdown this far in the season. The biggest one as far as the game goes. To get on the board first and to, to make just a little bit of a statement and uh, go out by a touchdown here early, that's a, that's a big, big thing for the Vikes. So Andrew Remington set for the point after attempt. Lewis Finch is going to hold it. The snap is good. The hold's good. The point after attempt is good. And Cadillac with a 7-0 lead with 9.33 left in the second quarter. And, uh, you know, it just, it just comes down to expe- expectations. And, you know, I, I hate to say it, you know, I'm, I'm, I said it to Eric Runstrom before the game that, you know, I mean, Cadillac is going on 18-0 and 0 in the regular season, and we got 700 people here. Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> I mean, really? Well, they, they, I mean, the stands <laughs> have filled up a little bit, at least. Yeah, there's still some, some this, sparsity this down there. This room only in this place. I, I'm not sure how much better you can do than 8-0 and 0 going into your last <laughs> game. You're going to play a Traverse City Central team, which, I, I mean, let's face it, we don't like them very much. They don't like us very much, and... Uh, to play in the last game of the year for the league championship, I'm not sure why you can fit any any more souls here in the building than you can. But um, it is what it is, it, and and the ones who are here are excited, and it's a big crowd. It's just not the biggest crowd, and, and you would expect more uh, for a team that's that's eight and zero. That's that's as exciting and entertaining to watch as these guys are too. I mean, let's face it, we're not talking about a team that's Petoskey where you run a double wing, and it's it's like pulling teeth to watch them go up and down the field and hope to score 14 to 17 points in a game. This team puts up points. I mean, they're exciting. They they uh, they cause turnovers on the defensive side. They're good kids, and so yeah, I, I would hope that if we are lucky enough to get a few playoff games, that we just absolutely pack this place out. Yeah, Grand Valley can get 19,000 people, and they're three and five. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, come know, on, man. <laughs> Where are you We got to give away <laughs> free hot dogs or something. I don't know. So Andrew Remington's kick in the line. Love the height. Coming nice down. Kick. Nice job. Puts it in the end zone, so there's the maturity of a senior starting to grow into his own who took on a, actually, Andrew Remington basketball, went to Lawrence Tech University, so congratulations, Dad. He committed for basketball. It's got to be an exciting time, even though we haven't, we're not finished with bas- uh, football, but, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, it's football season, but it is an exciting for time for him and, and looking forward to basketball, but right now it's just all 
Uh, it's 100% focus and concentration on the football field and what's going on with his senior brethren here on the field, which has just been a great thing, and being up 7-0 is huge. So we're up 7 nothing there in second formation. Ace back, hand off to Shepherdly. Nice job in the interior line. Nice wow. job. Yep, the, the, the defensive line is doing a good job of controlling the pace of this game. Uh, offensive line really has not had too big a push or too big a say so far. Does that surprise you? I mean, I've seen our teams play in the past. We, we've drugged guys on the field named Riley Norman and Jack Ford and guys that are just massive. Well, and and I, I've seen holes. And I just, this year it's just crazy. It just seems like between the tackles, these guys have just, there's been nothing there. I think it's discipline. Yeah. I really do. I, I, you know, Durga isn't going to get pushed around if he's disciplined, disciplined enough to stay in his gap. Neither is Sam Denman, who's an yep. ultimate team player, yep. right? Connor Kasuba was the same way. Yeah. He just oh, did yeah, his right. job, right? You're right. You're they right. Just, Undersized, Connor was the same way where, where uh, he he never gave much up. Yeah, they just they just stay in their gap. And right there, you know, the line doesn't over-pursue. One or two guys, the other one's straight. The defensive yep. backs do their job. They're just smart. Yeah. And so when you start getting into smart teams and you start getting into smart players knowing, you know what, I don't have to make a play. I just got to do my job. Yep. Uh, I think that's what you see on that defensive line. I see, I, I, you see that from Durga. You see that from Smaker. You see that from, uh, you know, Michael Holdship, who, who does make plays. Cody Lux is just one of those guys that just does his job. He scrapes the line. He stays. He doesn't over-pursue. Yep. And uh, then we got, you know, good linebackers, and you got one of the best safeties in the league, and you got good corners. And, and you, just, you know, that focus for, for these guys needs to be there every single down, it seems like. Oh, Johnny Alberts. Are you kidding me? Yep. Johnny Alberts. You're my Huckleberry, buddy. Nice job. So he comes off that. Uh, he wow. Gets, he gets blocked out there on the edge. He fights it off. And you want to talk about a kid who's come a distance in the last few years as far as a football player goes? We, we, we yeah, you talked about it, I think in the beginning of the year about that defensive back. Who's the corner that's going to step up and be what Aaron Wilkinson and uh, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy Cath and those guys that have gone before him and done that same thing? Where you're going to specialize. You're going to become. Uh, what it is that your football team needs. And to get us, on the field. Uh, and I'll tell you something else about Johnny Alberts that surprised me was having conversations with, with these guys a little bit. Who's the fastest player on your team? It's Johnny Alberts. When they run sprints uh, and, and they're, they're timed and things, Johnny Alberts is the fastest football player on this team uh, with pads on, with shoulder pads and stuff. And you, I, I, I just wouldn't have guessed that. There, there's a lot of names that I would have thought of before him. Um, but nice job by him to just commit to, to finding a way to get himself on the football field and contribute to a team and become a heck of a defensive back, and he's done that. That play right there just shows a ton of maturity. Take on a block like that um, and then go make a tackle on, on somebody in the in in the backfield. Just phenomenal. Nice job. Yeah, and, and you probably know something a little bit about that. When people start talking about how fast a kid is, uh, you know, you, even on the basketball court to the football field, there's mm -hmm. a difference between court speed and, yep. Uh, just be by being able to read things and then pad speed. You yep. know, you can be a four flat forty guy, yep. but be a six flat in pads. Oh you yeah, just don't carry there's a lot of four well. flat forty guys who can't play college football or and certainly can't play in the NFL. Yeah, it's, can they you, carry? Can their they pads? carry your pads yep. and? Uh, you know, and, and can, can you make athletic moves with it? I mean, it's there until the officials start coming out with stopwatches. I mean, the speed thing doesn't really make much difference on the scoreboard. But if you can, if you can turn that into uh, some athleticism and make plays, then it becomes huge. So all right, Traverse City Central Sports. Well, we, we might have got a hand on that. We might have, but it's going to be out at about the 41-yard line where Cadillac will take over first and ten. Deep in Traverse City Central territory, so the Johnny Albert stop proved pretty costly. Oh, I look at his teammates. So I don't know if you can get the camera. That look at these guys. Look at these guys. Do you think they don't understand football and appreciate a defensive play? <laughs> look at that. Oh, I tell you what, that chokes me up. I mean, you'd think that he just went out and, and, and ran for 104 yards and put the ball in the end zone. A, a, a nice defensive stop. His players, his teammates know it. They love it. They congratulate him. These guys really like each other. It's a cool thing. Yep, and that's the uh, heart of a program. And Lewis Finch off that right side. He's got a little seam. Nice job out there by Sam Denman and Zeb Brorsma, who actually sealed, but Michael Holdship led block. And then uh, you got uh, Ellens on the edge blocking for Lewis Finch. Picks up about five yards. It'll be second and five for the Cadillac Vikings, and they're in business at the 35-yard line. Momentum is uh, is definitely on the side of the Vikings right now. They can they can sniff it a little bit. I mean, it's it's way too early. This game is going to be decided certainly until the fourth quarter, and, and probably when the final 
second kicks off. But these guys can sense that, that there's uh, a little something that they can make hay with right now. And they're 35 yards again away from pay dirt. So, all right, Lewis Finch back to pass. He's got Ethan Myers deep. He's got 33 hole chip out nice there in spot. the flat. Oh, oh and Michael uh. just could not come up with it. He, you know, Lou threw it a little short. That is tough for a linebacker slash yep. oh, defensive lineman slash fullback to go to his knees backwards. Uh, and if, if Lou probably wished he'd have had a little more air under it. But, yeah, a couple uh, more inches of the pass, and Michael yep. wishes he'd be able to go down a couple more inches and get it. It was a nice little loft. over. You know, everybody was so concentrated on Ethan, who was about... 10 yards maybe behind uh, Michael Holchip on that play and had two or three defenders all around him, and Michael was open. Yeah, you put so much pressure on the defense when you got Lou, who can actually scramble out of that as well. Yep. Uh, and that's something Cadillac's had the last, you know, six years, be able to scramble a quarterback yep. out, still have good receivers. Uh, and third so, down, third yeah. and six, third and five. So you got a bunch up top, three up top, two down low. Lewis Finch in that delayed draw. Going to pick up maybe about it. three yards, bring up third and fourth, fourth and down. short. This is fourth down territory for Cadillac. Oh, no question about it. I think well, once you get across the 25-yard line for This is a 50-yarder. Uh, no, he's not, not got the leg point. for it. Yeah, not at With this the win. I think if he, maybe 10 more yards, about a 42-yarder or so, they'd probably He had a 52-yarder at, at homecoming. Yep. Definitely was long enough. He, I mean, he's got the leg for it, but it's just not a high percentage kick situation. I think if you look at percentages, fourth and three, I'd, I'd take my chance with our offense too. So we got a pistol left. I think T.J. Baker is going to come in motion. Lewis Finch is going to run this ball around the left side. The more peep hats, 73. Wow. Wow. Oh, that a face mask? Did he have his hand on his face? 73. I tell you, he fought wow. that off. That was a nice play by Seth Tice, the senior. Holy camoly. He, uh, you know... He bull rushed. He picked right. We went. Le we went left. It was a predictable play. Yeah. Uh, I, yep. I, I, could, I knew what they were doing, and yep. I have a feeling TC Central knew what they were doing too. And Seth Tice just made a play. And yep. Coach to Webb him. is uh, is talking. I'm not sure who the official is down his side down there. He's talking about how how Lou's head got turned a little bit, but it was just a great defensive play by the by the young man from Traverse City, and you can't take that away from him whether he got his hands up too high or not. His immaterial. Nice play. So all right, they come out in a spread package. Looks like they got uh, Joe Shepard Lee protecting his side, 11. Nothing. He, he's, he's not a very accurate passer, I can tell right away. Uh, you know, I think he's a little undersized at quarterback, Sean Williams. He's a senior. I think he's probably only 5'9", if I had to guess. Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, it's just, it, that, that out pattern's tough. Jake Ellens, I've seen him go pick for six on that pattern before. Um well, I, yeah, the, the thing that Traverse City Central has always seemed to be able to beat us on I in the years when they've just beat running us, the ball. Uh, running the ball and, yep. and, and running it, uh, and, and beating us to the edges on the outside, yep. and, and you can just jets. tell from, yeah, jets, jets, all kinds of little bubble screens, and um, the wheel routes, things like that, and, and this team is just not real susceptible to that right kind there. of stuff. Right there, that's the stuff that they've beat Cadillac yeah, on in the just, past. there's just nothing there yep. against us. Yep. yep, it's just, there's just a different element uh -oh. of speed on the outside, and that Ethan Myers? Yeah, now. Ethan Myers looks like maybe he got a little bit uh, chop block there. Coach Baker Lower body injury, I think, on Ethan. You guys are giving, uh, I'm not sure if that's Billy Shoes or who the official is, but uh, Todd Baker's definitely given his opinion on the way that that went down. And Well, it might have been a crack block, too, coming back off that receiver slot oh, that's position. possible. Because he's the outside linebacker, so he might have got cracked out there. I, I'd have to go back to tape to look at it, but that's kind of the area in the, you know, we'll see. But uh, it's a brutal game. It is a brutal game. Let's you know, give it again to the to the defense on the on our side of the football. That's just, I mean, there's there's not been much there for Traverse City so far, and Traverse City seems to have a few kids with that type of speed. Where any given play, I mean, they can take the thing to the house. So it's like our margin for error without the the typical size up front and all those things, and and just a real burner at a safety or something isn't huge. We've got to be really good on every single down, and hopefully we are uh, able to continue to do that. And so far we have third down and call it 11 and a half yards. Yeah, so they go trips down low. They got a guy out in the flat it's short again, yeah, but, but he's, he's not going to no hit, hit the, the ground. Bounce. So Fourth and 11. Yeah, it's just uh, you know, if, if they're not going to be able to pass efficiently, uh, they're going to have to rely on the run, and I tell you that's, I, I think you can run on Cadillac. I think it's tougher to pass on Cadillac because of our speed out of our linebacker position. 
Uh, but, you know, teams decide they want to put the ball in the air. And yep. Nate Houck should be back to, uh, yep. to be uh, a receiver on this punt instead of Ethan Myers, who was shaken up on that last play. And yeah, let's see if uh, let's see if maybe we can get something out of a out of a punt return game here because you got guys with talent back there, as you said. And we're either scary. It seems like we're always either uh, fair catching it or letting the thing bounce. Pick it up and go. Pick it and up and we're go. We're gonna let it bounce again. Now that one was a short one. Not much you can do with that, but yep. Yeah, a, con a concerted effort to try to come in and take advantage of some of those things. I mean, you'd think we'd be able to get 10 or 12 more yards out of it, but hey, we're eight. No, I'm not gonna complain about our starting field position on these things and. But I'll tell you, last year when we went to Comstock Park, the difference in, 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 in that game when we started coming back was those couple punt returns by Patrick Griggs who picked the ball up and made yep. those 15 yards. Yep. You know, it, it just it just really turns momentum when you can pick the ball up. Oh, yeah. If he can get back to the 45 or the 40, that just gives yourself your offense a lift knowing, hey. If you hey, can flip the field without yep. having your offense on it on the field, there's no question yeah. that that becomes a huge thing as the playoffs go and you get deeper into them. And, you're playing teams where every little play is so magnified. Special teams are going to yep. be huge. Yep. So, five receivers set Lewis Finch back to pass out to Michael Holdship. The battleship catches it for about a 10-yard gain before he's hauled down there across the 45 to the 47. It will be first and 10 with 545 and counting Cadillac with a 7 to nothing lead on the Traverse City Central Trojans for the Big North Outright Conference Championship tonight here on Memorial Turf and two years in a row something special something that hasn't been done in many years but uh, we're looking for seven straight playoffs I'll tell you something else if you're a college football scout or coach that happens to ever get their hands on this thing before Michael's had a chance to figure out what he's going to do stuff like if you're going to be that versatile as a player you can be a running back you can be a down lineman on defense and now you can catch the football in space and make things happen with it and uh, that kid can play. He's got the nice job, Lou. Pick up the first down. That kid can play. Michael Michael Holdship. I'm talking about it, and, and he can play uh, because of his size, because of his speed, because of his strength, and because of his versatility and being able to do all those things that he can do. There's not really anything that that uh, is a glaring weakness in Michael Holdship's game. He's a tough, tough runner. He'll carry you five yards. He can dance a little bit. He can do a lot of things. I can see him fit nicely into a lot of the programs that uh, are certainly here in the in Michigan, if not in the Midwest. You know, I've, I had the talk today with a uh, uh, recruiting coordinator from yeah, Ferris State. Nobody covering down here, yep. but we didn't get there fast So enough. hand out to Nate Houck, a little scat back. He's going to cut back. Oh, they're going to capture him out there. He's not going to come down from no. that. Nice pursuit by the Traverse City Central Trojans. And Nate, you know, he tried to make something out of nothing. He was one tackle away from, you know, making picking up positive yardage, but number two out there for uh, Traverse City, Daniel Yonker, we outside need to be, linebacker. Yep. We need to nice be faster job. to recognize or, an uncovered receiver on the outside. Uh, that time Ethan was down there pounding on his helm. I think it was Ethan. might have been Jake on, on this low side. And there was nobody that was covering him up. And, Zorro. Um, yep. Yeah, Zorro, whatever you want to call it. I mean, just, just a quick snap. And, and uh, I don't know what it would be, a tap on Zeb's butt or, or on uh, – uh, Matt Meyer's butt to be able to make that snap and get that thing out there. But again, you know, we're, we're already set at the line of scrimmage and he's not covered up. It just takes him a long time and you got to make teams pay for that. And it looks now like we're going to get a delay a game or we're going to have to call a timeout. We're going to call out. a timeout, Cadillac. So no problem. Cadillac's up 7 nothing with four minutes left in this game. But what I was saying was, you know, Michael Holtz, if you were talking about that, you know, I, 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 I talked to the recruiting coordinator from Ferris just today. Uh, you know, he, he texts me and says, hey, Cadillac's 8 no. who should I be looking at? And, you know, Jalen, you know, my son's obviously already gave him names, but Michael Holdship's definitely on the radar. There's other kids here, Smaker's yep. on the radar. He's one of those kids that could blossom into something special, uh, especially with, uh, you know, uh, just a focus on a single sport. And, yep. No, and, yeah, no you know, when you start looking at Cadillac over the last few years, it really surprises me how few football players actually come from Cadillac considering the talent pool that we've had. Yep. Uh, we should be putting four to five kids every year, if they want to, into a program. Uh, and, and for some reason, we don't. And I, and, I don't know, and I don't know if it's Northern Michigan or if kids just don't think, well, I'm not that good. But Ethan Myers could play college ball. Jake no Allen could, could play Zip college ball. Jake Allen could be a defensive back. Zip could play college ball. You have five or six kids on this team, I know right now, that could play some level of college ball. Uh, and, you know, I just, I you know, what is it? Is it just... Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't know. I, I know, I mean, there's such a, a cesspool of talent and, and conglomeration of schools in the in the bigger towns downstate, and they tend to get to all of those type of exposure camps and recruiting camps and things like that. But there's no question that uh, these guys 
in front of us can play at a, at a higher level. The, the names that you just mentioned, for sure. So, all right, Traverse City Central does a nice job covering up the pass. Lewis Finch has to scramble, picks up maybe about a couple yards after that penalty. They'll bring up, the, or that uh, uh, loss of yardage, the play before, bring up third and 17, and a long play for Cadillac, where now I think you're just looking for either a bubble screen, maybe a, you know, a, a double pass. We've seen that before. Well, or, you know, you're, you're just yeah. looking there, for a pass interference. You're going to do something to get in the hands of uh, one of your real talented guys. Look at how long they take. And they're still uncovered. These uh, guys are still uncovered out here. What's going on? Oh, my gosh. I'm not sure. Uh, Illegal procedure? I don't know, but if I'm in the booth next door and I've got one of those coaches on the sidelines with a headset on, I'm just screaming to them, just tell your guys to go snap the ball. <laughs> Chuck the thing out. It's three plays in a row. Taking Traverse City Central quite a while well, to get into their defensive set. And they have a real, uh, Traverse City Central is, is real methodical about where they put their defensive backs for whatever. I don't know if they want matchup situations. I'm sure they do with depending on where our personnel is, but they're real slow to get there. But you want to cover them. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I would think that that's part of the plan. Third no. and forever now, third and 25. It's all right, Lewis Finch back to pass. He's going to go deep. Oh. Across the middle, picked off. Oh, almost caught by Ethan Myers through his hand. Well, Traverse City Central should have been going the other way on a dead sprint. It went have. through his hands. Ethan Myers had the opportunity. I was a little fast on the on the gun. I went by it, but Ethan Man. was open early and uh, and had Lou pulled the trigger earlier he on put that. a lot of air under that. Yeah, he, he waited a little bit, and then uh, by the time it eventually happened, it was it was already deflected and, and and long gone. But well, the one thing I do say is 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 Cadillac's offense, uh, you know, Traverse City's defense is probably one of the stoutest defense we've seen so far outside of Gaylord's. Uh, so it's a good matchup, but I, I just haven't seen anything from Traverse City's offense that scares me. Well, not yet, but, you know, that stuff can change in a heartbeat. One, one, you know, if we call a slant left and they happen to pick it apart correctly and they've got some kids that can get some space and speed, so a seven-point lead to me right now is tenuous at best, and I just, you know, I, I'm not in the same camp with you that their defense has been overwhelming. I think we've shot ourselves in the foot about four times here in the last two series. And, I'm doing it uh, for the guy next to me. Well, <laughs> I mean, we've got good <laughs> field position. We've got guys in space. Lewis hasn't been under just so much duress that he can't see what he's, what he's able to do. Yeah. Um, we've got, we just got to make some plays. And so here comes Ethan Campbell off the right side. We got pursuit 44, and I tell you, the oh, team Hunter speed. Smaker and Hunter Smaker, but I tell Cooper. you, Keenan Cooper is the one that turned everything back to the pursuit. Smaker ran down the line. Keenan Cooper came in from that outside linebacker position. You're going to have to go north and south on us. You're not going east and west. We're going to force you right out of bounds with our speed, and uh, they're going to have to make that adjustment at halftime. Just such a weird thing that football is. You know, that play, you see that play develop, and you think, that could go for eight yards. It's just, and we got so much And a four-yard loss, I mean, just by a couple of couple of guys really knifing through and getting good angles and chucking blocks. So, all right, here we go. Number 11, back to pass. Maker on the backside. He's got a receiver out there, and nope. it's just, the accuracy is just a little off. It's going to bring up third and 14 for the Traverse City Central Trojans. Boy. Could you imagine if they had a pa uh, quarterback that was, I mean, just accurate? So he's had some receivers open. He's just, you know, he's throwing it short. He's throwing it long. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah, they're, I mean, that would have taken a great, a nice throw and a nice catch, and they still would have had uh, a third and five, as it is his third and 14. So Joe separately down in the three-point stance, quarterback shotgun formation. Joe's going to protect. There he is, the out pass to Joe Shepherdly up the field oh, he goes. Man, this is the discipline. You're, yeah, yep. you, you hit it right on the head. Our guys are, are really disciplined on the outside. I think that was Keenan again on the outside who just stood there like a man they and said, you're job. not going to get outside me and you're going to have to turn it up. And I know my guys are coming. And Cadillac does such a nice job of gang tackling, swarming to the football after our outside guys turn it in. Nice job again by Coach Baker's Cadillac Viking defense. All right, that forces a punt from Traverse City Central. Fourth and eight with a minute 36 left in the half. Cadillac with a seven to nothing lead. Again, you're with CCTV, Jeff Brooks, John Emmington. 
We're calling the game tonight here at Memorial Stadium in Cadillac next to the lake. Beautiful night. Probably 50 degrees. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh they got oh, it. and they're going to throw a flag yeah, on that after he dropped it? You've well, got to be kidding me. They didn't touch there the ball. There is no chance. There's, they, didn't, they didn't touch oh, the ball. And if you don't touch the ball, it's a roughing. I don't think it's a uh, – no, I think it's, it's a, a – is it a 15-yard or is it a 5-yard? When you're just running in, there's a difference between running the kicker and he roughing dropped, him. He dropped the football. It better be a five-yard penalty. If they're going to call that as a personal foul, that's, that's, that's just I, ridiculous. I think it's running into the, I don't know. It's, it's, it's one of those calls where uh, it's it, gotta, that, that, you got to touch the football, needs though. to become like a deflected pass. you got to touch the football, tipped. though, you know. And that's, that's been the rule from day one. What do we got here? Five-yard penalty running into, so they're going to either have to re-kick yep. it or they may decide to go for it. It's going to bring up a fourth down on the They're going to actually decline it because it is a running gotcha. into the kicker. And yep. they, they like their There's what a they big difference between running in and, ki and roughing them, and that was definitely a run-in. Ball hits the turf like that, and it's out of their hands. It just it should, <laughs> it should be free You know, free game. it's like a point-after attempt. Football. If the ball hits the turf and he fumbles it, that, that holder's free game, man. Yeah, yeah, no <laughs> doubt. I, I, you, never see, you never see roughing the holder called, do you? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, so, all right. Cadillac will have a minute 14 left in this half. They're up seven. I'm not quite sure who gets, who gets the ball first. Who kicked off? Uh, Cadillac we deferred, yeah, yep. so we'll get the ball. So spread package, three up top, two down low, Lewis Finch. Showing DJ himself. Michael down here. Oh, we got two guys in uh, motion. You can't geez. do that. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> that was a Petoskey move last year, two guys in motion. That's a penalty. That'll stop the clock for a five-yard legal procedure. I think Michael's going to get it talking to now. <laughs> Let's get this on camera. He's well, the whipping boy for tonight. <laughs> that's stuff that's just absolutely got to get cleaned up. Man. Oh, you know. It's week nine. It's, I mean, it's, it's week nine. Dude, you, you, gotta understand you can't the believe the stuff I watched. I know, <laughs> I know. But if you want to make a deep run in the playoffs, you can't shoot yourself in the foot. Oh. Good teams are going to take that and, and, and just... Yep. Overize you. Yep. I'm watching snaps over the quarterback head in week nine. Uh, like you can't spend 15 minutes a day snapping the ball. <laughs> so Lewis spins back to pass. Oh, he had Nader early. Yep, he doesn't have much now. You better un unleash the ball. He's going to get drilled and he's going to end up. Yeah, that's, that's a hit I don't want to see Lou take. Just get rid of the ball. Uh, I know he tried to extend it. There was nothing there. I don't want to see him take any more hits than he has to take. Uh, either get up the field on the run, run out of bounds, or, or get rid of the ball. He had Nate Houck in the seam early. It looked like Nate's uh, prescribed pattern was kind of a stop and go. It, it, it had Nate been able to just sit where he was originally open and Lou found him, he would have picked up probably eight, nine yards and uh, been able to have a manageable set of downs after that. But once uh, Lou scrambled out, I think Jake Ellens needs to make a little more concerted effort to come back and get himself... You know, come back hard. It, yeah, you, you got to get yourself unguarded. You, you just got to come back and get some eye contact with the quarterback. So, Lewis Finch rolling left. He's a lefty. He's out the pass. Oh, a little bit high. Number five was there. Um, this is, might be a situation where, boy, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I like this. You got Traverse City Central with two timeouts left, 42 seconds left in the game. You're going to pin us deep. You might want that clock to run right now because they're going to get the ball inside our 50 with under, with 30 seconds to work with two timeouts. Yeah, those are, those are situations where, uh, you know, you, the, the clock was low and ticking before halftime, but um, now you're man, we, we went to, uh, you're we went to some eight. real wild <laughs> spread and, and throw kind of stuff a little bit early in that. Took all the right. ball kind of out of Michael's hands. Lewis Finch on a delayed draw to Nate Houck. He's going to run. He's going to lose yardage there. It's going to be at the five-yard line. They're going to call a timeout if they were smart, and they do. 35 seconds left before half. They're going to call a timeout. Cadillac's going to be on their series. own four. There's nothing that happened there is a good series. Started with the, 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 the penalty. The initial penalty just kills you and just takes all the momentum that you got from getting the ball back. And uh, So now if, if they get a good run back, which uh, Michael had a, had a poor punt last time, which he's usually been a pretty stellar punter mm -hmm. most of the season and pretty consistent. Uh, they're going to get this ball back inside our 50 for sure. 
and it might be inside the 40 depending on how much pressure they get. Uh, and I don't know, usually Traverse City has uh, pretty good field goal kickers because, you know, they're soccer players. You know, they might be able to put up three points. They might, they'll be able, they got a timeout. Heck, they might move the ball 10 or 15 yards, and uh, we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, the Cadillac Vikings defense has been strong all year. They haven't given up a ton of points. and uh, No, they haven't, but, you, but in these situations, I mean, it's like, the defense, you can almost throw it out the window because it's going to be some type of a prevent set where you're going to give up some stuff underneath, and you're probably only going to commit three three guys, maybe four, to any kind of a rush situation. And so it's not your normal defense that's out there. And if you got some speedy receivers and somebody happens to make a break, I mean, you, you become kind of vulnerable. That was not a good series for the Vikings for sure. So all right, Michael holds it back to punt. It's going to be returnable. Oh, he fell down. We got lucky there. He fell down. He's going to pick it up at the 40-yard line. Oh, and he's going to be 32. He's got some room. He's going to finally be hauled down there at the 50. But, man, he would have been inside our 35 if he yeah. wouldn't have fell down. But that grass caused him some problems. Well, and the clock was ticking the whole time, too. So that didn't hurt down to 21.2 wow. seconds to go. And he's at midfield instead of, like you said, at the 35 or so with 30 seconds He would have been at the 35, too, if he'd have picked that up. Because he'd have picked that up at the 50. And he had 20 yards before anybody. And with that type of speed. So... Trevor City Central is going to take over first and 10 with 21.2 seconds left in the half. Cadillac up 7 and up, and the Cadillac defense are going to go four deep. They're going to be in a prevent. They're going to give up 20 yards before they really have to come up and play. And uh, we'll see what Traverse City Central has. They're going to a shotgun formation, three back set, one eight yards off. They're going to pitch out, double reverse mm -hmm. here. Here's 33. Long developing play. Cooper got smoked out there. 33 still on his feet. Doesn't get out of bounds. They're going to have to call a timeout, but maybe a first down for... They're going to stop the clock for a first they're down. They're going to have to measure it or, uh, or move the chains one or the other. He's pretty close to the first down. That's a tough play to call when you got four four DBs 20 yards deep. Yep. Um, you know, it's a 10-15 it's a yard play. You're going to have to hit something across the seam now. Uh, you're going to have to go across the middle because uh, you still have a timeout. It's going to be a quick hitter to a tight end or a slant pattern, if I had to guess, uh, for 10, 15 yards, because they're going to give you 10, 15 yards. Linebackers aren't going to allow anything underneath. So we'll see what uh, Passanall has, has to he's say about take it. A, he's yep. going to take a little bit of time to try to figure he's out what he wants to do. He's going to take a timeout. Wow. That means he's just playing for the, you know, the end zone now. I mean, otherwise he's going to have to go to corner. Gonna, they want 12 back on the clock, and, and they'll uh, get that put back on there. And uh, You know, so Cadillac here in the, in the prevent situation is just going to have to keep guys in front of them and try to tackle them in bounds and uh, get this thing into halftime with a seven-point lead is what they're hoping for now. And I don't think they're going to be happy with that even if they do that. It's, uh, it's been one of those things that you didn't want to see. You didn't want to shoot yourself in the foot, and you didn't want to be uh, the, the team that stopped themselves in, in here in the first half. We've had a lot of opportunities. We've had a lot of short fields and haven't been able to, to convert those things into points. Um, Coach Webb's not going to be happy about that. Coach Baker is going to be happy with his defense. They've, they've done everything that they've asked to do, uh, that they've been, ever been asked to do. And but, you it, know, John, the resolve of Cadillac, I mean, a lot of these kids play basketball. You can, you can go down there right now and talk about four or five kids right now that have come through the basketball program. The resolve that the ki these kids have had and the situations and the big games that these guys have played in in the last four years, three years, two years, uh, you, you, you can go back to district championships from last year to, uh, to, uh, to football and basketball, regional championships, quarterfinals. These kids these kids seen a lot bigger games than this. And oh, yeah. But, there's but the no resolve question. that yep. they have and the composure that they have uh, is really what wins these these games, and I just oh, I, I, think so. I don't I feel think, any type of right. I don't think there's any angst them, you know? down there, but it's uh, y you know I, none of those guys are going to be happy. Lewis Bench probably gonna be the first one in the locker room to say you know I, that wasn't my best half of football cause it could be just because there wasn't a, a a lot of great execution offensively, and uh, they hold themselves to really high standards, and and those guys will take care of the, their stuff on their own in that locker room and. They're not going to be any finger pointing or blaming for what's no, going I'm on just or not going on. Their, their the demeanor is oh yeah, they 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 expect to to do well and play well and execute and and you know they're up seven zero on a really good football team. That that's still going to be a positive thing, but they know they can execute better and and uh, that's what they're going to look to do in the second half, I would guess. Eight seconds to go. So eight seconds to go. Pistol formation. 
Campbell's going to protect. Quarterback's out there to throw. He just, man, he just doesn't throw the ball real well. It just um, looks like everything is so difficult for yep. them, for, for their receivers. And, and that's the frustrating thing for me offensively is I, I know, and I know that Coach Webb knows that there's a lot of stuff that we can do and, and do effectively against their defense. And we've kind of fallen into this thing in the last few series where we're just going to we're going to spread you out we're going to try to become a, a rollout like one-dimensional throwing football team and it, we were too easy to cover up and now we got we got uh, okay here's Jake four deep oh, a little draw play to Camp Bell he's going to pick up about 20 yards but that'll be about it and That's that'll the end the half so a little bit of damage nothing done Cadillac with a seven to nothing lead at halftime here last game of the regular season in Cadillac. Big North Conference Championship outright for Jim Webb and Todd Baker and the Cadillac Vikings. And, uh, you know, John, really, it, it, it was, uh, like I said, there's nothing on the, on, in the team in white that caused me concern uh, offensively, especially with a quarterback that just really is not consistent. He's, I don't know if he's completed a pass. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's definitely had some difficulties connecting with those guys, and, and those guys look like they're having to break off their routes and get to the outside, and, and everything just looks really tough for them, and, and you got to credit our defense for that. Um, I would say if I, if I was to make any observations based on what I thought I would see coming in and what I actually saw, um, I don't think Traverse City Central is, is quite as... Uh, offensively potent as, as I would have expected them to be, or else our defense has just been that good tonight because it just looks like they've got nothing going on offensively that um, that would cause you great concern and say, wow, we just can't stop this guy or that guy. So, you know, it, it's uh, it, the, the Trevor City kid who was interviewed on the news the other night, I mean, he said it best. This isn't a game that either team needs to win. It's a team that both teams want to win, and whoever wants to win it more is probably going to do that. And um, yeah, I'm not sure in the first half that that is clear to me who wants to win it more because Cadillac, although they uh, are up 7-0, I think that they feel like in, in the locker room they're probably 20 points better than this team should be in here with at least a two-touchdown, if not three-touchdown lead, um, and and they're not. And it's and it hasn't been anything that Traverse City dialed, didn't dial up any crazy blitz packages that we just didn't know how to block. and um, it, was, it was just stuff on our side. And, and but it's nothing we haven't seen before. We saw it last year, too. No, and, and hey, man, if we're going to sit here in, in game nine with a chance to go 9-0 and oh and we're up at halftime, I don't want to be the Debbie Downer that sits <laughs> here and tries to pick everything apart. But I just know the standard that these guys have, have come to accept, and, um, and and that wasn't it in the first half uh, for the most part. I mean, I think the first quarter was really good. That offensive drive that we had where we ended up punching in, it was fantastic. But outside of that, we've had three or four drives that have just not been Cadillac football-like. So, all right, at the half, you've heard it, CCTV, Jeff Brooks, John Emmington. We are up 7 to nothing, looking for that big North Conference championship for the second straight year outright. We'll be right back after these messages. Brooks, John Emmington, Cadillac with a 7 to nothing lead here late in October. The big North Conference championship on the line here tonight. Two straight years outright for Cadillac. I don't know how many years it's been, John, but uh, it's been a long time. I think the sixth or seventh straight postseason appearance for Cadillac as well. Uh, they are leading the Traverse City Central Trojans seven to nothing. But uh, you know, really, what really got Cadillac to this point in my mind, uh, outside of the arm of Lewis Finch, but it was all set up by the running game of Cadillac. Uh, Cadillac prides himself. They got four really good backs, including your quarterback. Uh, that just sets up everything because you force those linebackers to respect the inside run of Michael Holchip and Nate Houck on the edge and, and Keenan Cooper. Uh, I haven't seen, I mean, to, right now Cadillac has 70 yards rushing, which really affects your passing game. And I think if we just get back to old school Cadillac, I think we'll be all right. Yeah, the and it's not. Yeah, I don't want to oversimplify it and just say, well, you can just run the ball all the time and that makes everything turn out okay. But certainly with the the stuff that happened in the last few series, there is not typical of Cadillac, where it just looks like we're going to send guys in kind of deep out patterns and um, if two guys in motion that start to start a huge series off with a penalty to put you back right away and. Um, to have the ball in the field position as many times as we had it in the first half and not capitalize on those opportunities. Those are all things that um, are just things that aren't going to get you very deep in the playoff run, which starts next week. Regardless of what happens here in the second half, 
the game we play next Friday or Saturday is going to require a little bit more attention to detail and a little bit better execution than the one after that. If we're lucky to move on, is going to require more and more of that. So that's what we look for this time of year. It just seems to me that our, our team, we executed really, really well in the beginning of the year, and that is what kind of put us in that spot where we went on that undefeated run and maybe beat some teams that were surprised uh, to be beat or to be beaten at least as badly as Cadillac was able to take care of them. Um, and and then, you know, teams start to see that on film, and so they see what you do, and it makes it d tougher every single week to be able to perform at that type of a level. But those aren't, that's not what's beating it. We're not getting beat because we're getting out game planned. I mean, it's, uh, and we're not getting beat at all. We're up 7-0, but we haven't put the ball in the end zone a lot, and it's been no more uh, and no less than just offensive efficiency and execution and um that, that's what I look forward to, to seeing in the second half. Are we able to clean that stuff up? And you got a bunch of seniors on that side of the football who played together for, you know, we were listening to that at the beginning of the game when they were introducing those guys. Ten years, eleven years, these guys have been playing together. They know each other inside and out. They trust each other. They like each other. They hold each other accountable. They don't want to see an undefeated season that's within their grasp be lost because of their lack of focus, uh, even if just on one snap. I mean, you don't want to be the guy that jumps off sides. You, you just don't want to do that to your teammate. And I, I think that's, uh, I, I'm hoping that that's what really rises up here in the second half is that these guys just sniff a chance to, to do something really, really special in the, in the history of Cadillac regular season football and go seize that opportunity. So, all right, we're going to get ready for the second half here. Cadillac will be receiving. Um, you know, it's just getting back to the basics, getting back to, you know, your defense controlling the game, your offense just doing what it needs to do to put points on the board. And, you know, I think uh, Cadillac will do that here before the end of the night. Cadillac leading 7 nothing with 24 minutes left to play to decide who is the Big North Conference Championship. Will it be a tie with Traverse City Central and Cadillac, or will Cadillac win it outright for the second straight year? And it will rely on the young men, 18- and 19-year-old <laughs> kids, uh, it, 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 it grows a lot of gray hairs, but, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a lot easier to play the game than it is to, to coach it and watch it. Yeah, no question about it. You can't affect a whole lot from up here, and you can't affect a whole lot from on the sidelines. But, uh, <laughs> you know, if, if I'm going to put my, my uh, marbles on, in anybody's corner, I'll put it in the corner of these seniors that are standing out there for their last regular season game here at Memorial Stadium. So, all right, the kickoff to start the second half will be to the right side where Ethan Myers will be picking it up at about the five-yard line. He's going to bring it across. Nice open field tackle there just across the 20 down to the 24 where Cadillac will take over first and 10. And Jim Webb, Viking offense led by Lewis Finch, will come onto the field to see what kind of adjustments we've made at half. And I'd like to see a little bit heavier dose of north and south running, some option. You know, I really haven't seen a lot of the jet play. We've only seen it once or twice. I haven't seen T.J. Baker get involved at all from the tight end position. You know, that little uh, flat pass or that little drag pass. And uh, Yeah, it seems like all of our series have just been kind of cut short and stubbed up a little bit, and we haven't been able to really get deep into our offensive game. Here's Lou. So Lewis Finch is going to take it off that right side after fake handoff. He's going to pick up a gain of about 11. It'll be first and 10 for the Cadillac at the 35-yard line, so there's a nice pickup for the Cadillac Vikings to start the second half. Yeah, Lou gets all 10, gets a first down, gets us into that, starting to approach that sweet spot of the field where you get between the 40s, and then you just really feel like it's all downhill from there. All right, so two back set, shotgun formation, two receiver set, one up high, Jake Owens, one down low. At the bottom of your screen is Ethan Myers. Hand off to Michael Holtz at the battleship off that right side. Nice job by 73 there. That left defensive tackle for Traverse City Central. He's a big kid, Seth isn't Tice, yes, he is. He's a nice player for Traverse City. And Same player that made that nice uh, tackle on Lewis in the backfield in the first half. Might have had his hand on his face mask on that one. But, uh, yeah, Seth Tice is a... He doesn't look like anything but a football player down there, does he, number 73? Yeah, you put the pads on, he's all football player. Oh, baby. He reminds me a lot of Nate Poople, too. Yep. Derek Diver from Traverse City West Here a couple we are, years ago. again. Snap, throw, touchdown. He was all football player as well. So, all right, Lewis Finch, two back set, two receiver set. Oh, I thought we went. Lewis Finch going to take it up the middle. He's going to pick up about three yards, what he can. He turned it up instead of stayed with Cooper on that wide side. And it's going to be third and five for the Vikings. 
I like to see them kind of make that, let that play develop. Sam Denman was pulling on that, so was Matt Myers. Lou thought he had, I, I tell you, Traverse City Central, they close uh, a little bit. They back. flow, and, yep. and, and their backside linebacker does a real good job of staying home. And uh, Lou, he sees it, then all of a sudden it's just not there. He closes it real yep. quick. So yep. They've got some collective team speed, no doubt, and they've got some size. They move around well on defense, disguise their stunts. Lewis Finch back to pass. Uh. Oh, and it's going to hit the ground. It's going to be a dirt ball. Lou had him, too. It was a nice comeback route by Jake Allens. Nothing going on. I'll bring up fourth and five, and Cadillac's going to punt. I think if you added up all of our punts for the season, may not add up to as many as we've uh, had to, to try to kick away here tonight. Or at least it seems that way. This may only be our third punt or something, but it just seems like every single series we're getting ourselves in fourth down situations where we don't have any choice. The defensive line for Traverse City Central is pretty stout. Uh, I've been impressed with them. they got some nice linebackers too. Chepperly is just, you know, he's all over the field as well. Uh, so their, their, their front five is uh, as good as we've seen. Michael Holdship is going to punt the ball away. Nice punt again. It's going to be returnable. And I think that's Schwanicky. Blocking the back people wanted. But uh, 23, Tanner Schwanicky, his uh, older brother, TJ, was a heck of an athlete. Uh, he's back as well, and he returns that punt for about five yards. Traverse City Central will take over first and 10 at the 33-yard line. And, you know, talking about this game, giving some of those guys earlier in the week and talking about what's the game plan, what's the, what's the real key, and uh, I think the thing that stood out more than anything else was, was, was toughness. Who was gonna, who was gonna be tougher and more physical on the football field? And that's been a pretty even battle tonight. I'm, w I'm with you. I'm impressed with Traverse City Central's ability to, um, to just make sticks and, and, and to make plays. At, even at times where it doesn't look like there's a whole lot there for them uh, defensively. Just one guy will come through, rip through the line, and 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 make a good tough play. Or right there, you know, they're they're going to lay the wood on you. They're they're going to take every chance they get to stick their shoulder pads on you and. Uh, make you remember that you were hit, for sure. You know, the one thing that is riding on this game tonight is, you know, obviously Cadillac's going to have two home games no matter what. They might get a third home game if they beat Traverse City with all the extra points they get from the wins that Traverse City has gained over the uh, the course of this year, plus the points for being a, uh, you know, a, a Class A team. Uh, this, this, this win bodes really high as far as point total because I know they're fighting right now uh, with Lansing Sexton, who's going to probably be in our region, uh, and or uh, Lowell, if they come down to right. Division Four, right. uh, these playoff points they could go They're over huge. 120, which is huge. Yep. 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 So, yeah, those are the unknowns. You don't know going in how big it it could be because you don't know all those other things that are going to happen tonight. Uh, but you certainly definitely want to take as many playoff points in the next week as possible. Nice hard run by Shepherdly there. See, that's the that's the secret to success that a lot of teams just have not understood is, is just if they can just stay pounding the ball um, you know a lot of teams against us they want to challenge us and you know we're just up to the challenge because we've got so many athletes and uh, this is a this is a grinder game and I, I still think Cadillac has more athletes but uh, they can wear you down because we got a lot of two-way players yeah I think both of those last two uh, plays from scrimmage for Traverse City have kind of been full spin counteraction type power runs and here's another one yep four yeah. yards at a crack They'll bring up second and six for the Traverse City Trojans. Just looks like their running backs have caught the, uh, taking the handoff a little more downhill than they did in the first half. And they got some big boys on that offensive yep. line. 72s, nice size. Ben Sherwin. And I, I just, I just don't think that quarterback's a danger to really hurt us with his arm. Uh, I think the running game's probably going to hurt us more than the, the passing game. They're almost at midfield, 47-yard line of their own. It's a uh, Full house formation handoff to Ethan Campbell again. They're getting a good push out there with the offensive line. They're, you know, well, it didn't look like a whole lot there. They still got two yards. Yeah, that's uh, time the linebackers came up a little faster. It was a nice job of. Yep, nice push though. Uh, yep. Big third and five for the Traverse City Trojans. Big down here for Cadillac. Not sure if that might have been Dominic Cataldo that came up. Could have been TJ involved in there too at the end of that thing. But those guys are going to be big, big players next year for Cadillac. Yep. It's all right. Two receiver set, full house, shotgun formation, back to pass, nobody there, he's got nothing, nothing. nothing. and here comes Keenan Cooper, nope, 67, <laughs> Johnny, Johnny Durga. Durga takes a big step over the quarterback, nice job big fella. So a nice sack there, and Cadillac speed proves potent again, Traverse City will be forced to punt. 
Well, well I was with you. I was kind of looking at the receivers for Traverse City downfield, and after, there just was nothing there, and I wasn't sure. Uh, a lot of times this year I, I've looked back, and there's so many nice quarterbacks in the big north with the ability to scramble out of there and get big yards. That was the fear of them, but Dirks took him to the turf. All right. Let's get a return, fellas. So fourth and 14, Traverse City Central will punt. Cadillac's up 7 and nothing. I'd like to see him catch it clean and get it up near midfield. And decent punt there. It's going to hit the turf again. Oh, he hit it! Oh, oh no! And that's a fumble, and Traverse City Central is going to pick it up. Cadillac team, uh, that, I don't know the that, player. I think it was Johnny Alberts who was near it. I'm not sure if he uh, touched it or not, but he was certainly pretty close to it. It, it. it redirected. It hit off a Cadillac player. I think they're discussing it right now. Cadillac's going to catch a break here if it didn't. I'll tell you what, that's... I, uh, Driving, being driven nuts by our special teams right now, just not. Uh, that's that's still a punted ball. They're going to give it to Cadillac here, and we'll be able to go back and look on film and see if that actually hit Johnny or not, or uh, or a different Viking or nobody. But uh, that's frustrating because that is a catchable punt in the air, and we're just we're really kind of tweeners and indecisive on that thing. And just come uh, up and grab the ball. We shouldn't Jake, be. I mean, those guys are strong. Jake Carell back in yeah. the day, dude. There was no question he was catching the ball on the no. fly. He was going. So, all right, Cadillac first and 10 at their own 30-yard line. Two back set hand off to Michael Holdship right up the middle. The That's the battleship right there. It picks up about seven yards. I tell you, there, there isn't a single linebacker I know that's going to want to meet him in the middle. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you even meet, meet him in the middle. He's going to still pick up two or three yards after the after the hit. And, you know, it's, he's just tough to bring down. Oh, yeah, there's no question. He's he has a load. little space in there, and he, away he goes. He's not carrying here. He's lead blocking. We're running left. Here we go. Oh, holding on Cadillac. I think they got us. So, usually the, the penalty flag in that vicinity. Yeah, it's either motion or... Motion or holding. Yeah, and I have a feeling it was holding on the center. Yeah. Oh, illegal procedure. So, it's only a five-yard variety. So, that bring up second and eight. Replay second down. Low-scoring game so far. Mistake-driven game. He and Cooper got a little dinged up. In comes Nate Houck. That's big. Any any penalties are are big. And you go from second down and two to now you're second down and eight. So all right, we'll see what Jim Webb has dialed up here with 6:30 left in the third quarter. Cadillac with a seven to nothing lead. Game nine. We got Zorro. Oh boy, they get in their out defensive set really late, like you mentioned. We got a little pistol look. Here comes Lewis Finch over that left side. Not a whole lot going on there. A lot of scraping and a lot of pursuit from that left side uh, of Traverse City. Minimal gain of maybe about two yards will bring up third and eight, third and six for the Vikings. See if Coach Webb doesn't go to that same kind of a zero set and have Lewis pop back out of that thing and dunk it over the middle. You haven't seen that a whole lot this year. Not have a lot, but it, it, it's it quite a bit. Times. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's happened a few times, but uh, usually Draw he doesn't go, yeah, he usually doesn't go back to back on a second down, third down with it in this situation, and, and uh, we're not, we're, we're back into a full spread. So this is where you see Lewis Finch go on that delayed draw, five receiver set, three up top, two down low. Lewis Finch in shotgun, back to pass. Oh, nothing going on. It's going to be tipped at the line. He had hold chip out there in the flat. It was a nice defensive effort there by number 64, Traverse City, Zach Mayo, and that will be a punt for Cadillac. Just not stuff that you're used to seeing uh, with the Cadillac offense. It was a, that was a five-man rush, I think, out of Traverse City Central and an unguarded or an unblocked uh, rusher up the middle and Lou just had to get rid of it and tipped away. So Michael holds it back to punt for Cadillac Vikings. Boy, they sure don't respect his leg much. With the, as much as it's gone over their head, they're still sitting back there only about 30 yards. And there it goes over his head again. And 33 is going to go. Oh, he got a lucky bounce and here it comes. Nice going to be tackle. dragged dragged down there by Jake Kellens. Jake like Allen. I said, he's an all big north performer in my book. Uh, and he's going to drag him down at the 30-yard line where Traverse City will take over first and 10. And, you know, I, I just can't believe – do you think they have 100 total offensive yards? They who? Traverse City. No, I, I, we can't have much more than that. I mean, we haven't really moved the ball much either. But, no, I don't think there's been a whole lot of offensive stuff. They got some toward the end of the first half, but it was kind of garbage yards that weren't going to amount to much. That, you know, they might have got 20 or 25 out of that last play from scrimmage in the first half. So, all right. Traverse City inside handoff to Shepherdly. 
Oh, he's right up the middle. He could be gone. I don't know if he's going to catch him. He's got a lot of speed. Number nine, we're going to track him down, though, Jake Allen. That's oh, a block, that's in, a the block back. in the back. Did they get it? No, they didn't throw the flag. Wow, 72 was down there and threw a heck of a block. Ben Sherwin, but number nine went off Matt Poople. They got another Poople coming. And there must be three brothers. Uh, boy, that was a nice play right up the middle. Jake Ellens ended up dragging him down, but, man, I thought there could have been a block in the back that was missed. Would, have been, this, would have been late. And it wouldn't this, have, this is shaping up to be just like what last year was. Yeah, it's going to be a football game for sure right down to the last tick. Five minutes to go now in the third quarter. So, all right, they're knocking on the door at our 20-yard line, and there's a timeout on the field, and who called it? Wow. Hmm. TC Central calls it. A little bit of a difference between uh, coaching philosophies. If that's Jim Webb on the other side, you get a long gain like that. He likes his team to run up right to the line of scrimmage and, and make the defense re get there and get lined up in time to go run another play. And Traverse City's going to call a timeout, let the guys recover a little bit. But, you know, that's been Cadillac's motto, though, you know, uh, their mojo, I guess. You know, they've been a bend but really don't break defense. They, they've they given up some plays, but really... Well, our defense has had to be on the field a lot tonight. I mean, our offense has not sustained any drives in the last, I think, five or six series. We've, we've given the ball right back to Traverse City all five, five of those series. We've just gone back to them either in punt form or... Uh, but if you, if, if, if you think about it, because I've watched the tape, I haven't been at all the games, I, I, you take Manistee and throw it right out the door, okay, yep. because Manistee was just that bad. Offensively, we have not put up a ton of points the last three games No, outside of Manistee. We have struggled with Gaylord. We've struggled we with have. TC West. We've we struggled with yep, we've made TC some Central. And had some penalties at key times. It has not been a clean, crisp offensive performance. And luckily, our defense, uh, Coach Baker's defense, has stepped up and, and risen to the challenge and kind of carried us a little bit. And tonight, it's just been glaring. I mean, the offense really has no nothing in sync. We haven't put together strings of two or three first downs in a row and gotten any real long, broken uh, gains with the exception of Lewis's one touchdown run. Yeah, and I don't want people to think I'm, I'm, I'm bashing on Webb either because that's not, that's not what I'm saying. No, it's no, on the it's kids just, to execute. Absolutely. I'm just saying I, I've noticed that trend the last couple of weeks, and here comes 20, Ethan Campbell. Nice job by Ethan uh, or T.J. Baker to come up and from that linebacker position. But, you know, what I'm saying is it, I'm not talking about Webb not being able to move the ball. It, 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 it comes back to the kids executing. I'm just saying, offensively, we have not, you know, really put up the numbers we've been used to seeing the first six games. Yeah, it just hasn't clicked. It, it nope. just has not been a um, a machine like it like it was early on in the season. And you know, there's been flashes of it, but it just hasn't. We haven't had that consistency where it's just been drive after drive after drive where um, where teams just didn't have any answer, except for like you said against Manistee, which really wasn't a very good football team. So Joe Schlepp, Shepherdly off that little counter again. They're starting to pound the ball. And they pick up another three yards, bring up third and seven. See, this is four down territory. Uh, you just, if you're a smart team, you just pound the ball for another two yards each each time, and you pick up a first. We'll see what they dial up. Cadillac defense has been pretty stout, edge to edge. It's it's that middle that you got to really protect. So all right, here we go. Same offensive set. We need, we need somebody on our defensive side to, to step up and make a big play. And there it is right there, and he's going to pick up almost a first down, if not a first down. I think it's going to be, be real, close. real close to a first down. If not, it's going to be fourth in just a matter of inches. So they're probably going to measure. It's going to be fourth down just short. Boy, we got bad angles up here. So fourth and one, 330 left in the third quarter. Cadillac with a 7 nothing lead. Traverse City Central, you know, I, I run Shepherdly. Uh, the, the dude's 200 pounds plus. I give the ball to Shepherdly, and if you want to meet him in the hole, you meet him in the hole. Uh, or he's lead blocking for Campbell, one of the two. He's Traverse City, there. fourth down. You give it to Shepherdly, he's going to pay. I, he, it's just strength right there. He yeah. just, I don't know who he hit. Yeah. If he catches it and he's going downhill that's and leaning chip. forward, he's going yep. to get his uh And that's, I tell you, needed. that's something when Holdship and Shepherdly meet one another, yep. isn't it? That's 440 pounds of muscle. Yep. It's fun to watch. It's a man's game. Now you got a first down, you got six yards to go to the end zone, and Vikes got a they got to buckle to down. Out. Yeah, and, and to be honest, they haven't been great inside, this, inside the 10-yard line. Our defense hasn't been great. It's just that most teams haven't ever gotten down there. Joe Shepherdly again. He's going to get in. Nope, down to the one-yard line. 
be second and goal to go, and I can't believe you're going to go away from Shepherdly. That left side's con they're really getting a good push. I think our defensive yep. line's getting a little wore down, and Shepherdly's just a bowling ball. He's yep. a tough kid. I think he's only a junior too. No, he's a senior this year. Yard to go. So second and goal. Looking for a big push here, a big defensive play. We got three, six, seven in the box to Shepherdly again, and he's not going to get in. The defense holds him. Are they going to get the push? Yeah, he's oh, they got out. it. So touchdown, to Traverse City. Leg. Yeah, that's just one of those things. We're in high school. They don't call that whistle very early anymore. And Man, it's going to be a tie game. You know, but the, I still remember the the, the speech you gave. Last year, John, uh, at the end of the game, uh, you know, the end of the day, you got kids in blue that have been in this situation before. You got seniors. We talk about it all day long. Lewis Finch would be a three-year varsity starter if it wasn't for other players that were in front of him. Uh, you, you got you got Ethan. Uh, Can we call another timeout. Yeah, you got Ethan Myers. Yeah, you know, you got uh, how many? Yeah, 14 seniors on this team that have been here. Yep. Uh, they got 14 minutes to turn this game into a big North Conference championship. I expect it to happen. I didn't expect it with, without any adversity. Yep. And that's what they're going to go through. You, you know, you, you got you got a team on the other side of the field that's playing for a ton of pride. Yep. Uh, they want the, the big North Conference championship just as much as you want it. You just got to buckle down as seniors. Uh, and just get the job done at the end of the day, and I just expect that to happen. Well, I, I, I expect it to happen, too, I, and I hope that it does. I mean, at some point in time, um, we always used to talk about it as who's going to start grabbing face masks and, and uh, holding kids accountable. In, in reality, a team just marched down the field and scored on you, but it's, it's the first touchdown of the game. I mean, that's a good football team over there, so it's not like these guys aren't going to be uh, pointing a name blame. they got to figure out a way to get the ball moving on the offensive side. Uh, we knew seven points wasn't going to be enough to win the football game. Uh, the defense can only do so much for so often on the field. I mean, the fatigue enters into it even with 16, 17, 18-year-old kids. Uh, so offensively is where things just really got to got to you got to find something that works again. And, and uh, a lot of that does come down to execution. And like you said, those seniors just stepping up and holding each other accountable. So a uh, seven to six game. It is good. It's a 7-7 to -7 game here in Cadillac with 14 minutes left to play in this game. It's a ball game. Big North Conference Championship. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want it any other way. No, you don't. Tie it, game. And, and the nice thing is you're at home. you got a nice crowd here who's kind of filed in a little bit late. They need least, some excitement. Yeah, they, need, they, they do. And, uh, and offensively, you know, we, somebody's going to step up and make a play. It's happened all year long. And if it doesn't, we may not win the football game, but it's happened all year long where Jake Allens makes a big play here and there or Lewis does with his arm or his legs or uh, Ethan Myers or Michael Holdship. Somebody on offense is going to make something happen that's unexpected or uh, that's just incredible, and it can make a difference in a football game. It has all season long. So, all right. Travis Maybe it'll Central. be on a special teams for once. <laughs> you know, I it just I just come to expect it, and so, something's going to happen somewhere. Uh, we saw it last year a lot, uh, where we were in the exact same situation. We take off, they scored, we came back and scored. Uh, Cadillacs they got more in the tank, more in the re, uh, in reserves, and uh, we just got a lot of nice senior leadership. And so Traverse City Central is going to kick it off. It's going to go out of bounds. It's going to be a legal procedure. Let it roll. And we're going to get the ball either at the 35-yard line or we're going to make them kick it again. We're going to take it at the 35-yard line. Jim says that's good enough for us. So our offense will come onto the field first and 10 from the 35. Tie game, 7-7. Seven seven. We're still in the third quarter. A lot of football left to be played. Uh, we just have to sustain some drives, get our running game going, get Lewis out in space, and get let clicking again. Yeah, just get yeah. clicking. And I don't, know if, I don't know if we need to have a, some type of a rhythmic hurry up on on offense. Or we haven't seen it yet, really, outside not, of a little a bit. Lot. In the we first did, half. yeah, we did a little bit early on in the first quarter, and kind of went away from it. The trips to the left here. Yep. So we got a full house down at the bottom of the screen. Michael holds it by himself. Probably going to run off right tackle if I had to guess. Nope, Lewis Finch back to pass. He's not going to have a whole lot of time. He's going to get brought down there. Nice coverage downfield by Traverse City Central. He's going to get sacked. I tell you, he's had a one heck of a game, 73. Well, Jim's pointing at Ethan Myers as if he's open here in the flats, which he is. But Ethan, or, or, uh, Lewis just had no time to find him. I mean, he's, he's, as soon as he set his feet, he's got one guy who'd step up in the pocket, and he's got another one. Um, 
that's just a confusing for me on first down from the 35. It just doesn't seem like us, where we're just all of a sudden going to become a drop back team with three guys left. And uh, so, man, well, he might the, have been the, set the, the stuff that we've done on first down effectively in the throwing game has kind of been stuff underneath to our uh, to one of our. There we go. So a little option play out to Michael Holdship, and he stays on his feet, and he's going to get knocked out of bounds. He didn't but get the first down. No, but, but he, he picked up 15. Yep, Lou, yep. Lou extended the play long enough, so it's a positive gain. Instead of second and 16, it's second. And, or it's going to be third and five, third and five. Yep. so it's manageable. So that was a nice play by Lou, a nice run by Michael Holdship to get out of bounds, and we go to that hurry-up offense. It's going to be third and five. It's a big, big play right here. Yes, it is. You're going to throw the ball if I had to guess. Hand the ball off to Michael Holdship. Not a whole lot going there, but he's going to pick up still a couple yards. Now does Jim's going to go for it. Yeah, this, this is, I don't know, man. It's a 7-7 seven, seven game. He's at least going to stand up there. He's going to try to draw him off sides once and, uh, and then maybe kick it. But It's fourth and one, but it's a fourth and a long one. That's close oh to yeah, fourth, it's, and it's two. fourth and two. It's fourth and two. So, all right, here we go. Fourth and one. Yeah, we could have. Gonna we, try to we draw him offside. We nope. got unguarded guys. He's not. Oh, get he it. held him. He held him. He didn't get it. Boy, it's close. I mean, where the where it's being spotted, it's real close. Both line judges are coming in right. It's the bottom on one the that's going to get the line. It's the bottom one. And that's right where the stick is. So it it's probably going to be measurable at least. Boy. I think the spot they got it. I, if they don't get it, it's a credit card. Oh, he already gave him the first down without even a measurement. Wow. So that's a first down for Cadillac. That's the roll of the dice by Cadillac to pick up the yardage. It's first and 10, 48 seconds left in the third quarter. We'll mark that play. The, the uh, chain guys aren't moving yet. Now they're taking off. Well, Jim's made those calls all year long. You know, I mean, it's, it's not like it was anything new for those guys to hear that in the huddle that we're going to go for it on fourth down and we're in our own territory. We did it all year long with the lead, tied up, down, doesn't make any difference. They they have confidence. Well, Lewis Finch is going to hold on to the ball. He's going to slither his way for about three yards. It was a nice job. He kind of slipped in the backfield. Traverse City did a nice job of holding the edge. 73 has played a whale of a game for Traverse City Central. Turn Lou back in. He had the presence of mind to go off right tackle with uh, Sam Denman and... Uh, Pick up about three yards. I don't like to see all the confusion on offense. I don't like to see T.J. Baker and Coach Webb in a conversation about where he's supposed to be. That's a we're we're week nine. <laughs> you know, we this should be drilled down and should be just kind of automatic. Where if, are you if, been? If you're going to get stopped, you're going to get stopped. <laughs> but man, guys got to know where they're supposed to be. And uh, <laughs> where <are> you been? <laughs> we're at the 49. It's was, a seven-seven game in the. That was my quarter. life for three years. <laughs> <laughs> So 12 minutes left in this game. Oh. It's second and seven. It's a tie game, seven to seven. It's it's for all the marbles, man. It's for the big noise. It's for bragging rights. It's for something that just hasn't been done in Cadillac yep. in a long time. Yep. Two straight Big North outright championships. Yep. Uh, you know, two nine and zero seasons. Uh, it's just, it's just special. There's a lot of there's a lot more on the line for those types of pride situations like you're describing than there really is for you know the, the playoff situation. The points will mean something here or there, but the reality is in the playoffs you don't know whether you're going to be better off playing a better team early or later or whatever. Um, so yeah, you're right. It's about the Big North and you've got 12 minutes left. Seniors step up. Coaches step up. Everybody step up. Fans got to get involved in the game. Um, the officials did their part with a, I don't know if that was a generous spot or not. He may have clearly had the first down. Just looked like a pile that kind of got up near the 35. I was surprised they didn't actually uh, measure for that thing with how close it looks like the chains are. But we got the ball at midfield. We got we got to continue a sustained drive here and get some points out of this thing. Yeah, and it just comes down to the poise, the poise of the kids. I, uh, I, I Trevor City has impressed me but I I, you know, I, I see our, our, our demeanor I, I think we just got a lot of poise and uh, I think we're going to finish this one out fourth quarter we're going to get it started Traverse City's still late two back set two receiver set shotgun formation hand off to Michael Holdship around that left side we got blockers out front Holdship is going to be met finally brought down after a gain of about a flag. five is that a hold came in, in the middle of the field late 
A block in the back. Holding oh. against Cadillac. Wow, from the back, Judge. Yeah, and, and that's it, it's not a spot foul at that point. It's going to be from the line of scrimmage. Yep. When it's in front of the play, or oh. they're going to it's oh, going to be a spot foul. He's going to mark it off from there. This is fine. Yeah, let's let him go ahead. I have no that. problem. Yeah. Right. Yeah. See, he brought it up a little bit. Oh, uh, he's trying to do it from the spot of the foul. All right, well, that's uh, another unfortunate penalty in midfield. Big time for the Vikes. It's going to make it second down and 15. No problem. No problem. We got the firepower. We got the athletes to do it and get it done. Just got to give Lou Finch some time. You know, I, I want to see, instead of Lou dropping back, I like to see him get him out in space. He's so dangerous running the ball and making a decision out there. Get him out in space to his strong side. You got three receivers set. You're going to roll him out because Michael's on his left. He's going to protect him. Lou's going to roll out left. Oh, he's going to throw it, and he's going to throw it in the that dirt. That might now be a lateral. Ooh. Not one of his best passes. But, you know, Lou's probably a 70% passer, if I had yeah, to guess. Yeah, he must not have had his hand fully around that thing or whatever it was, but that just certainly was not a good pass. So, all right, I it'll be... I think the uh, defensive lineman, the Tice kid, and uh, I don't know who's 60, is Zach Mayo for... Uh, Traverse City. Those guys are causing all kinds of havoc on our offensive line. They're, they're just they're busting through, and they're they're just making things a little bit more difficult for us offensively than we really want them to be. So all right, here we go. Three receivers at the bottom. Nobody up tight. Michael Holdship's going to protect his uh, strong side on the right. Lewis Finch back to pass. Oh, and he's going to get brought down and hauled down by number. Is that Poopal? Jeez, oh, Pete. I tell you, these don't quit making the Poopal kids. Nate Poople ended up, I think, going to Siena Heights. Those are his two younger brothers playing. Yeah, that's just another offensive series that's just stopped, and uh, the penalty was huge. I mean, you, you were doing some things, running the football, starting to get a little bit of a drive, a little bit of momentum going, change a quarter, penalty, you know, a bad pass by Lou, and then a sack, and it's over. So Michael Holdship, oh, nice job, Holdship. It was a tough, this returnable here. Oh, boy, oh. how many times has he fell on the ground? I bet you uh, number 23 is not real happy, and that's Shawanaki right now about what's going on, but he's used to that turf at, at Thoroughly, and all of a sudden you get on this grass, it gets a little slicker, the dew's starting to come out. Yeah, he wanted to uh, he wanted to catch that thing on the fly for sure and yep. get, some, get some positive yardage out of it. But, yeah, just a weird thing for the Vikes. We haven't seen Nate Houck be able to touch the ball in a while on, on offense, and... Um, just hasn't been any rhythm to it that's been able to, to build on itself so defense once again is going to be called on this time they're going to have to stop them a little bit earlier than they were than they did last time so all right inside hand off to number nine oh, off that right man. side uh oh this could be trouble he's still on his feet and he's going to get finally hauled down there across inside cadillac territory out to the 45 but that inside handoff matt poopel went off tackle uh just a lot of daylight on it so I don't know what happened to the right corner if the if the if I have to go back to tape but if the wide receiver held him up but that's a pickup of 20 yards you see our uh, our defensive linemen a little bit they look a little hands bit on tired hips. hands on hips they're a little bit flat footed walking back walking around and they've been out there a lot tonight asked to do a lot and they're going to be asked to do more here in the last 10 minutes so all right Traverse City Central hand off to Shepard Lee who's going to pick up about four and finally brought down there came back on the play I think is Cody Lux 84 who kind of went up field hard but then brought himself back pick up of about two ten minutes of clicking 7-7 seven, seven game second eight inside Cadillac territory you have to say Trevor City's definitely got the momentum here they've moved the ball they scored last time they've, they've uh, had a little bit of surge with their offense they found something that works with that little reverse spin hand they're off just, the quarterback. They're just pounding the, us with the ball. Yeah. They're not throwing the ball. They're just running the ball. Oh, and left. Uh-oh. And they throw it out there. So a nice job. Nice cover-up, but it's still a pickup of about five. It's manageable. It's just like a handoff. And uh, they keep you on your toes. I mean, they, they yep. nice job by their uh, coaching staff to not just go strictly to the run, to, to let your linebackers and cornerbacks and everybody else pin their ears back and come at you. you Got to respect them a little bit. All Big right. down. Yeah, third and couple four. Of them cause they're, uh, they I got a feeling they're going to run the ball and they're, they're thinking this is four down territory. Yeah, they're going to give it to their big horse a couple times in a row, I would think. 
So third and four. Crowd's starting to get into it. Nice to hear. And off. Oh, here comes Big Campbell. He's sweep. got some room out here. He's going to get to the edge. And he's going to get pushed out of bounds, but not before a first down. He showed some speed there. Well, it and, looked uh, like there was just a lot of space out there in the, on the corner that time. But we covered up quick. Did. Johnny Alberts, I think it was the corner down this side, did a nice job to, to hold it to just that gain of four or five because there was a head of steam and there was lead blockers. So, all right, first and ten for Traverse City Central. Nine minutes and ticking on Cadillac's 34-yard line. Inside handoff to number nine again. Nice job there by Holdship, I think, or Durga. It was John, John Durga. Durga that John was Durga there. got off the ground and found, found the football early. Got a wrap on him. Still going to pick up two yards. Maybe. No gain. No gain? No gain. Good. He had his knee yep. down. Nice job, Dergs. So second and ten for Traverse City. They're chewing up a lot of clock. They've been on they are. Need seven to get minutes. In, need to get them in some third, fourth, and long situations. Oh, he's going to throw it. Jake Ellens is all over it, I believe. That could be picked. Oh, oh he caught he it. caught it. Wow. Touchdown Cadillac. Jake was there. He, I don't know if Jake missed it or if he got a hand on it, and then it was still caught by the uh, Traverse City Central receiver. Nice concentration on that young man's part. Jake was there, though. The oh, kid yeah, just made a play. All over. Jake wasn't fooled on it. Wow. So that's a touchdown for Traverse City Central. They take the lead with eight minutes left in this game. This is something Cadillac has not experienced a whole lot of, the adversity late in games. They've usually been up. They've been in some tight ones, but they haven't been down, so we'll see what kind of resolve Cadillac has. They'll draw on maybe the Gaylord game at halftime where, where they were down late uh, by a touchdown and they had to come back at home and finish some things up. Sometimes it just kicks you in the rear a little bit and it did maybe get you out of your offensive funk that you were in when, when you know you're under a little bit of a time crunch. So it is good. Jeez, he's the good. Holy heifer. So, Traverse City Central takes a 14-7 lead over Cadillac here on the last game of the season. Gave up a 37-yard pass play for a touchdown, and that's probably one of the longest touchdown pa uh, or plays that we've given up uh, all year. We don't usually give up large chunks of... Uh, Real estate. No, and it was, you know, I don't even know what to, what to call it because Jake was in a good spot defensively. He was with he was with the guy. He didn't get sucked up because it was a halfback pass. Um, it even looked like he timed it well, and I thought maybe he had a chance to come down with it in the end zone. We were going to come out on the 20-yard line, but uh, whatever it was, it was. And, and now Cadillac's got to find a way to rally the troops, this, rally this, each other on the field, and execute. This is the drive right here. Yep. It's, it's not the next possession. You have to answer this possession at least with some sort of. You've been hitting the jaw for yeah, sure. I mean, you, you got smacked first around. In this game, and that was big, big deal. And then, uh, and now Traverse City Central has just come back and kind of put you in your place. And how you respond to that is going to determine whether or not you got to share this trophy with these guys, or you get to keep it all yourself. So all right, eight minutes and a half left in this game to see what goes on. Traverse City Central kicks it off. Oh, and a little miscommunication. Wow. We got lucky. We yeah, got really yeah, lucky. lucky. Miscommunication between Jake and Ethan, and it went. It's going to be a touchback. Cadillac's going to start on their own 20-yard line. But this is the drive right here. This is this is all Lou Finch, senior quarterback. This is all your seniors on the offensive line. Uh, this is this is just it. This is the game. This is the Big North Ch uh, Conference Championship. This is where you make your hay. Uh, and this is where the memories are made, and Absolutely. you just can't wait until there's two minutes left in the game. You got to do it right now. So yep. I expect Cadillac to respond. Big players make big plays at big times. It's time. Yep. Lewis Finch, shotgun, off that right side, and he's going to get dice and slice his way up to almost a 20. Oh, that's a late hit. Boy, it was it was pretty close. That kid. I saw in. that through the camera. <laughs> He came in there a little bit late, but uh, nice job by Lou. Nice, tough, hard run. You hate to see that have to be out of him, but I love to see him clapping as he comes back to the huddle. He, he's not a kid that's going to go down quietly with his team. He, he's going to do everything in his power these last eight minutes to get this thing into the end zone. So it's second and one. Jake Allen split right. He's been held relatively quiet here tonight offensively. They haven't thrown it. They only threw one pass to him early. Yeah. And it was a dirt ball. Yep. So uh, a two-by-two two set with Michael Holship protecting Louis' left. 
This Lewis is going to hold ship, I would have to Shotgun formation. Fake handoff to Lou. Uh-oh, he's back scrambling. He's looking. Nice comeback pass by Jake Ellens. Now there Jake did what Jake needs to do. When Lewis is having to scramble, and you're, obviously you're out of the, the prescribed play at that point in time. By the time Lou had to tuck that thing and take four steps backwards to get out of trouble, Jake did a nice job, came back to the football where, where uh, Lewis could see him and find him for a first down. Nice job, Jake. Nice job by Lou to find him. So first down for Cadillac. They're marching. They're on their own 40-yard line. They got some mojo. Three receivers set up top. Cooper, Ellens, and Ethan Myers with receiver down low. T.J. Baker, Lewis Finch off that left side. And he's going nice to pick up about two yards. Number 22. Yeah, it came up. Poople. Poople. How many Poople's they got on that They just keep having them. <laughs> it's got to be Catholic. He's a, he, he does a nice job at, at busting stuff up on the outside. And that's a sophomore. Yeah. Looked a little bit like Johnny Alberts did. And, uh, the only good news for us is we still picked up two and a half yards on that thing. So, so the clock is ticking. It's going to be second and eight for Cadillac. A two-by-two two set. It's just kind of a what we like to throw out of. Straight three-step drop off that shotgun formation. One, two, three. He's going to pack it up. He's going to look to throw across the middle. And it's going to be... I think Jake Ellens fell down on the play. Maybe they got tangled. It wasn't pass interference, but uh, he was looking for Jake. It's going to wow. be third and eight for Cadillac. That's Boy. a surprising call. I like to see him come back on the edges. Well, I just, I mean, the whole, we're just all of a sudden this team that's going to try to drop back and throw. It's uh, weird. We're a 300-yard on the game, uh, on the ground game uh, team. Well, it's, it's, a, it's, been a, it's been a mix, and, um, you know, now you're in a situation third down and long near midfield where you're almost in a forced to throw situation, which you hate to be in those because now they can dial up some defenses that they wouldn't have so much confidence in on second down and long. So Lewis Finch back to pass. There's oh, he's, oh, there he was. Oh, and he threw it. Oh, and he just threw it behind Michael Holdship. I tell you, 73 read it. He read the swing pass. Yep. And Holdship came Took free. Off. Yeah, it was a nice job by Michael to take off and release. And, and Lou just... Um, he, he's on his back shoulders. Lewis normally is a 70% passer, and he's usually on. Tonight he's been a little bit off. Yep. Uh, it'll be fourth and long. Cadillac's going to get the ball back. This game's far from over. There's six, still six minutes and 20 seconds left in the game. Cadillac down seven. Unfamiliar territory. Unchartered waters. Just Todd Baker's defense. But the one thing I noticed, too, this game is we've, we've lost a turnover battle so far. Yeah. It's one nothing them. We, we have lost one a turnover battle, but... Uh-oh, uh-oh, we were lucky they weren't rushing. Wow. <laughs> oh, they got roughing the kicker. Roughing, or is it going to just be uh, It's. It might be running into them, but if they get roughing, it's a five-yard. I'll tell you what, but five yards might be enough for Jim Webb to say, we're going for it, fellas. If, if, we, if we're fourth and three here near 50-yard line. He's talking to his coaches right now. What are we doing? Wow. Very nearly didn't matter because it very nearly was recovered by but the Vikings down there on that side. I, that would have been huge. I just want to point something out to our viewers, though. We're coming back. I think we're going to go for this, guys. Earlier in the game, my color man was complaining about the muff. Should have been a 15-yard penalty. Doesn't matter. Uh, no, <laughs> co no complaint. I mean, I, I didn't even see that, but it, I'm sure it was running into that's likely the right call. But, no, what I'm saying is we just benefited from that call. You know what I'm saying? We muffed it. We picked it up. Oh, we'll yeah. It. Well, get the tap. I mean, if it's going to be called one way, it's got to be called the other. Both five-yard varieties, though, so it didn't All really right. So now Cadillac's going to go it's for huge. it. It's huge. It's fourth and big. three. This is huge. Six minutes left in the game. We're on our feet now. It's fourth and three. Draw him off sides with a hard count. Nope. He's going back to pass. He's got Jake. Yeah. He's got Jake for a first down out there. So we roll the dice. And Jim that. Webb gets a first That's the down. underneath pattern, just bread and butter stuff. Love it. Quick, quick release. You got Jake, nice control receiver out there. So, all right, new life for Cadillac. Six minutes left in the game. Cadillac down seven. Now we got three receivers set up top, one down low. Michael Holdship single back. I'm not sure we'd be throwing the ball here in this situation. No, this one needs to go to Michael. Lewis Finch is going to run the ball up the middle. He's, he's got space. And nice he's going to be brought down just across the 35-yard line. Nice run by 
Lewis Finch. Heavy dose of Lewis Finch and Michael Holdship right here yep. is what's prescribed for. you got five minutes and 45 seconds left to go in the game. It's just a ton of time. Don't have to be in any kind of hurry at all. So, all right. Boy, oh, yeah, I'd like to take advantage of these slow defensive backs getting out. Man, oh, man. Just a quick snap. Once. Just one time. Hand off to Michael Holdship up the middle. Nice pursuit by number five who came in from that right defensive end. They do close fast, yeah. don't they? They've got, they're more impressive defensively now than they were in the first quarter, for sure. Um, they came around the edge hard. Yep. Yep. And they've got their, their couple of down linemen who hopefully are getting a little bit tired here. That uh, The Tice kid, he's a, he's a tough, tough A load. Player. He is a load. So two receivers set, two back set, shotgun formation. Lewis Finch going to hand off to Keenan Cooper off that right side. He's going to be swallowed up there by the right defensive tackle who shot in there past Brorsma. I think it was Jake Laskowski, uh, 55. Yep. Man, he came in there like a bullet off that left tackle position. Bring up a third down and short for Cadillac with 4.42 left in the game. Cadillac down seven. All right, two by two set. Lou Finch gonna go right. He's, he's got, got the blockers, oh. and he's gonna get hit by there by number 22. He's got the first down though. Yep. So first down for Lou. The clock's gonna be ticking. They'll reset the chains, then the clock will move at 4:22. That's just more point of people at the at, at on the right side, or just more blockers. We like to go to that short side. Yes, we do. Jim likes to force his guys to turn up field, and especially when it's, uh, I don't know if that was what, what our formation was there at all. but The two-by-two. Two. Yeah, we, it, that looked like it could have gone for more than it actually went for. Uh, nice nice low tackle disrupting Lewis's feet. By the, by well, the so Lewis checked defender. off. Michael Holdship's getting this ball. He's going to put uh, Cooper in motion, hand off to Michael Holdship. Yeah, if the linebackers were paying any sort of attention, Boy, I tell you what, telltailed one, on that. Yeah. He Coach turned around Coach to Michael. Webb, Coach Webb might have one more progression in that play after the fake jet sweep. Pass. A fake to Michael. And then pass. Lou's got all kinds of room over here to the right, either run or, or pass who pulls that thing out. I mean, you, you know how much attention the jet draws, and then Michael Holdship draws the rest of it. I mean, everyone is sucked into the middle. There's nobody out here. It's like a little dose of their own medicine that they've given us over the yep. years. So, all right. Offset, two by two. Oh, they were still shaking around. Lewis Finch out there. He nice. throws the ball. Make a move. Nice job, Ethan Myers. So nice Ethan throw, Myers right? gets down to inside the 10-yard line. It's going to be first and goal with three and a half left in the game. Lots of time. And are they going to call timeout? Uh, I think they haven't got the chains moved yet, so I think, uh, I think Jim's just taking all the time that he wants to here. So first and goal to go, nine-yard line. This is what I expected, Cadillac. Knocking on the door, down seven. What do you like here in the red zone, the, the, the skinny red zone? I like, I like on first down, I like to see Michael Holtz touch the ball. Uh, with pistol or Lou keep the ball. Uh, I don't like, I, I, just, I just want, you're going to run Michael right is what you're going to do out of this because TJ's going to come in motion. There it is, Michael's going to run right. Nice job, 73, wow, as he played a whale of a game. But I, li I, I like running away from that kid. <laughs> I, I, I like the pistol with Lou right yeah. now because it just adds Michael as another blocker. And it's just it, it, the safety's already 10 yards deep. He's the one that handles the quarterback, right? Yep. He's the one that shadows. I like the pistol look. I like giving Lou the ball right here, even though it's second and 11. Let Lou have the, have the ball uh, in pistol. Let him make the decision. Now you're going to go a two-by-two two set. I think this is, I think this is going to be a pass in... in uh Lewis Finch back to pass, corner end zone, yep. nothing going on, just out of the reach of Ethan Myers. That's a really tough pass, tough it, it, angle. It is. It's a hard pass to complete. Lou's done it. Uh, now you're in third and 11. I think you're, you're in two down territory, obviously. Yep. That's why I like the run there. I like the run with Lou. Now you bring up third and 11. I still like Lou not dropping back but rolling out. I, I even like a design draw here. Well, I, I, I like something. I like some sort of an option situation for Lewis out in space. Um, you might get it. You might get it. You might get the option left here. Jet, here it is. Jet option. 
Hold ship out there. In get space. around there, he's Michael. Get there. Get to the corner. And he's Ooh, not going to get in. Four. He's going to get down to the four yard, five yard line. It's going to be gonna run. fourth and five, a fourth and goal from the five. You can't run the ball now. There's no way you're running the ball. But you know what? I still like the delayed draw. I really do. You like keeping it in loose hands a little bit I, longer. I, I want to keep the ball in loose hands. I want to roll him. I want to keep you protect backside. Let your tight end, T.J. Baker, roll and scrape. I tell you, they're going to come on Lou. Call a timeout here. Yep. Uh, Lou, Lou has the option to run the ball. I, I, I've said this for years. I've said it with Gary. i said it with Jalen. Dude, you keep the ball in your best player's hands and let them make the decision. Yep. And Lewis Finch is the best player on this team from a decision-making standpoint. Traverse City's had a, had a uh, little success tonight, though, in putting some pressure on Lewis. You know that they're going to want to come in the pocket here. Yeah, well, in the pocket. Yeah, and on, on fourth down, uh, in in the t the territory and the field where you're at, you don't have to worry about giving up the big play because the big play is only four yards. So you don't have to worry about getting stretched. So now you can bring a little bit of extra heat around the edges. So it's a, that's a tough, tough call. I like... I like a, a, a tight end in this situation, curling it around in the middle. Yep. Just something that they haven't seen yet tonight. Um, somebody that they haven't had to try to cover up. And, you know, you got your you got your bigs on the outside. A, a fade pattern to Ethan or Jake is probably something that they're looking for. Lewis rolling out. Um, still gives him the opportunity to run. But I like keeping it a little skinnier here down in this part of the field just because there's the defense just they don't have to cover a lot of real estate. Two times last year, Petoskey in Ogama, we ran tight end in motion. Jalen went left and then went to run, but then pulled it up yep. and threw it right to the back end zone to T.J. Baker, yep. that tight end, and he was scraping. I would not be surprised here if you see on the right hash, is that ball on the left or it's on the left hash? I would not be surprised T.J. Baker comes in motion and does that little scrape route with, with two receivers on the right with that little button hook yep. in the middle. We did that against Ogamud and Petoskey last year. I remember it vividly. This is really the game here because we let the clock tick down so far, right? Yeah, it is. Two this is it. Left. We just you either score or this game's yep. over. Yep. Because Traverse City's not giving it back up. And a bad decision is never to, I mean, if I'm going to throw it, I'd love to see the ball go Jake Ellen's way just because I know he's going to wrestle and fight and bring that thing down. Are we going to go right? We're going to run the ball. We're going to keep the ball in loose hands. What do we got down up? Lewis Finch, here we come. Oh, is he going to back up? Oh, and he's going to be brought down there. He's going to lose his footing. Tried to reverse field. It was a designed run, wasn't it? I don't know. I don't know. It was just, uh, you know, the Traverse City was able to bring all those guys off the edge, so he'd, Lewis had nowhere to go to the left. Uh, started out to his right, but he had nowhere to come back to. The, the reality is this. The reality is, is we're still Big North Conference championships. We just don't own it outright. Uh, that that is the reality. But there's some there's some things that just have to get corrected. I mean, this team's goal has never been to to just be okay going into the playoffs and make another district appearance or or something. And um, just execution, execution, execution. And tonight it just wasn't there offensively. So all right, Traverse City Central. Going to hold the ball. Number nine off that right side is going to be brought down after a gain of maybe two yards. They're going to, Cadillac's going to be forced. They got two timeouts. They might be able to get the ball back. I mean, this game's well, not you over. Got, you got uh, 122. We're going to spend our last timeout after the next run. So if you, you, you got, certainly got to hold them under a first down. Assuming you can do that, that's going to run off about another, you got to figure six, seven seconds. Gets it down to 115, 116 for the timeout. It's going to be third down. I think if we are able to get the ball back, uh, you know, if Traverse City were to punt this thing on fourth down, we'd be, we'd be skinnied up on about 10, 12 seconds if everything goes right. But crazier things have happened. And, uh, and those yeah, guys down there in I blue just shirts, are, you know, they're going to be in there. They're going to be pawing at the ball right now. They're going to be, A, you got to stop them. You certainly can't let a first down go by. If you let a first down go by, then it's over, and they can just take knee and, and burn this thing out. But. There's a better team in blue than there is in white. I'm, I'm not saying Could be, that. but it just wasn't proven on the field. I, I know. I, I'm not you saying. you got to hand out a lot of credit to the defensive, uh, the, the way that Traverse City responded after the they first touchdown me by, by the Vikes. Yeah, they just they haven't let up 
really anything offensively. Cadillac got a little bit going there on that last drive, but they stiffened up and they, their their size up front on the defensive line, combined with their their speed and ability to to take stuff away on the edges, has has really kind of taken away our offensive potency tonight. No question. So all right, minute 22 left in the game. Cadillac down seven. Traverse City Central on their own 15, second and eight. They pick up the first down, it's all over. They, uh, Cadillac has one more timeout. They might be able to get the ball back with 10 seconds, a little counter. With Shepard Lee, he's holding the ball, doesn't get any yardage. 117, that'll be our last timeout. Yep, so they're going to get the ball back with 32 seconds left in the game. Well, it's that's you gotta you got to load yet to try to stop them on third down. I mean, nothing Traverse City would like to do more than pick this first down up and you end throw a double thing. pass here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Wooer no, would. No, they're not gonna they're not gonna throw the football. Wooer we'll come out in a swinging gate. <laughs> definitely's a load to bring down. Todd's gonna load up the box defensively, um, and and so that and then you they're know, gonna they're take off thirty five seconds. They're gonna take off another thirty five seconds. They're gonna get the ball seconds. with thirty five or forty seconds left in the game with no timeouts. That's enough. I mean, if, if that was able to, to turn out that way, and I'd, I'd be, if, if we are able to end up receiving a punt here, you're telling Ethan Myers and come up hard. Jake Ellens, you got to come up and catch it, and you got to tell our guys that, you know, it's really not a punt block situation because you certainly would be able to, to be able to handle another roughing the kicker thing. But first thing first, you got to get them stopped. Uh, that's not what I expected at all. But my expectations in the Brooks household are a little higher than others. <laughs> <laughs> That's what people don't understand sometimes. <laughs> Why he's so hard? I'm like, well, my expectations are a little different. Well, the expectations of all these kids out here yep. are, are different. Agree. And uh, they, they know that they did not do what they uh, set out to do tonight offensively for sure. So third and eight, a minute 17 left in this game. Cadillac down seven, Traverse City Central. They pick up a first down here. It's over. If not, Traverse City will kick, and they will can run the clock down to almost nothing. Will they run the ball? Yes, they will. Reverse. That's a crack back. Not called. We will. So it'll be a minute and 10. After they set the ball, it's going to be 35 seconds or 45 seconds, once right? They, once they set it. So it's going to be down closer to down to 20 or so, right, by the time they have to end up doing their thing. Traverse City may end up letting this thing tick all the way down. And you don't uh, take a delay a game, but no, you, no, I don't no, know if you use your last call, timeout. That, well, I don't think they are feeling like they're going to need to use a timeout. Even worst case scenario, Kevin okay, comes out and scores. They're, they're not going to have any time to do anything after that. Anyway. Well, they, if they pick up a big play, you like to regroup, because Cadillac's going to come out and just... Yeah, they're going to use it. So, like I said, they're going to get the ball back with 30, well, 28 seconds left by the time this plays over. But I tell you, if I was our coaching staff right now, I got Ethan Myers, who's proven from last year to this year, that at any time, all the way from the East, uh, Lansing Eastern game, he can take it to the house. Yep. Gaylord, he did it. He brought it back all the way to the 20 in that, in that pouring down rain, Lansing Eastern last year. This year, he's had some... You need to catch it with a sense of aggression and, and, and really come and attack the football yeah. and wherever it is. I mean, you just got to plan on catching it. you got two guys back there, and, uh, you know, the lefty-righty thing is, is okay, but it really, hasn't, um, it, it really hasn't done anything for us this year. I mean, it's been the, probably the weakest part of our offensive production has been on the return side, and you could, you could stack those guys, one in front, one in back, and so if it's a short kick, Somebody's got it. It's a long kick now, but nobody else needs to be anywhere near the football. All right. I got so many scenarios running through my brain right now. <laughs> I don't even have a dog in a fight, man. <laughs> I'm watching basketball games from last year. <laughs> Just trying Ethan's to by himself back there. I think that means we're going to try to go after the, the, the punt, which is... Uh, it, it could be smart. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just, I'd, I'd take my chances with him catching it and uh, block this thing up. Come up and catch it, E. So, all right. 34.8 seconds left in this game. Cadillac down seven. They're going to get the ball back. They're going to come after it. He's going to take the safety after taking a bunch of time off. Yep. 
Would so you, 27 7. Would you do that? No, absolutely not, because now you set up a situation you're going to kick you it to us. Win. If we score a touchdown, the game's over. Wow. But hey, that's all right. They're, in their mind, those those seconds were more valuable. But the pro the thing is, is they got to kick that thing from what is it, the 25 yard line in in uh, high school, for after a safety. Or they 30? score a touchdown. Cadillac wins. Touchdown wins the game now for sure. But there's only 27 seconds to do it. So, you know, you've taken I don't it. Care you don't put points on the board. I understand that. <laughs> they they did. They chose to. It could turn out in their favor. But if it doesn't, that thing will definitely be second guessed. Um, it, you know, it, the, it, you're going to get a little bit better spot on the field, hopefully, in, in Traverse City's mind, by being able to free kick this thing. Um, but now you've also let Dude. Cadillac set up a, a return a little bit, so hopefully that works out well for the Vikes. Yeah, that was real. I, I didn't know what to say. I kind of was... Um, I, I the, the kid did a fantastic job of yeah, taking time off the clock. I mean, he ran... Seven he, seconds. Yeah, he he ran from sideline to sideline. Uh, I think he dipped his toe in late but Cadillac ball, before he was touched. The ball doesn't, the, the clock doesn't start until the ball is touched now. Correct. So instead of on the snap, you're saying. And so if you I was Cadillac, depending on where the ball's punted, you might it's take the a knee. Five yard line, right? You yeah, you twenty. You might take a knee. Hmm. Interesting. It well, is. here's where our returns team needs to really step up because this is a, a huge opportunity. If they can get this thing back to near midfield with uh, with over 20 seconds it's to winnable. go, that gives you two or three two shots. Or three to get shots. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right, this is a huge... Oh, man, I tell you, passing off is going to be walking home. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the kickoff... Straight, long kick. Jake's Jake out Allen's at 35. At the 35-40. And he's going to be brought down to the 50, right? So they're at midfield seconds. with 23 seconds left. You got you got four plays, four pass plays, six no seconds. No timeout, so you got to take care of the ball at the edges of the field. You, you can't afford, you can you cannot afford to go down in the middle of the field without it being a, a first down. So you got to be mindful of that. Clock's going to run on anything that's uh, short of the first down sticks inbounds. So all right, here we go. 23.2 seconds left. We're getting giddy now. We got a pistol formation. We have no timeouts. Yeah. It's 14 to nine. We're chasing Lewis Finch back to bounds, pass and Ethan Meyer. He, he was hit late and out of bounds. That's going to be another 15 yards on top of that. It's going to print him down at the 26 yard line, I think. Wow, 17.3 oh, to word. go, and you're going to have two shots. That coach is going to friggin' walk home. Nice job by Lewis to stay <laughs> locked in on Ethan Myers over there. Nice job by Ethan to, to haul that thing in and take a big lick. And apparently late big lick. So that's going to be down about the 26-yard line. Let's our guys regroup. It stops the clock. That is huge. So it's first and 10 at the 26-yard line. 17 seconds to go. New life in the Vikes. They are right back in this thing. So here we go. We got a two by one. Michael Holchip's going to protect. Lewis Finch is going to roll out right. He's going to look for Jake, or he's going to look for his tight end, TJ Baker, who hasn't seen all night. He might come off the line. You got to pay attention to him. TC is given all the space you want in the middle of the field. As long as they keep it in front of them, they feel like it's going to be hard for Cadillac to get up the line of scrimmage and spike it. But so take, there's TJ take Baker right there. Take what you can. Nice grab. Nice toe touch. That's Jake. So Jake Ellens comes up with a nice catch. They're down to the 18-yard line. 11.9 seconds to go. You, you probably want to look at taking your shot now at the end zone because you, you cannot afford to anything inbounds. It'd be tough to run up there and get that thing spiked. Possible, but tough. 11.9 seconds, second and one. Lewis Finch back to pass over the middle. Oh, he's got it. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. He did. Down Cadillac. Are you kidding me? I tell you, TC Central, what a. Oh, oh my God. Look at this crowd, baby. Was that Jake Ellens? That was TJ Baker. TJ Baker on the drag across the middle. Oh, baby. Cadillac is going to win the Big North by themselves. That is all. Two Coach years in right a there. row. All they Coach are not going to be denied. Unbelievable. I have seen a ton of finishes in Cadillac. I have never seen one like that, ever. So we still have a one-point conversion. Are we going for I two? I think they should go for two. But uh, 
Just take the penalty and then regroup. Take the five yards and then figure out what you want to do. It's really not that vital. Take the five yards and then go for two, coach. There you go. That's fine. Go for two. Oh, baby. I tell you. I have never you seen. He dragged the tight end. And I don't know if TJ was in the slot. He, he, no, he was he, lined up over the tight end. He dragged. Wow. He drags across the middle. And now I'm just glad that I'm not. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm glad I don't live in Traverse City. Oh because my the God. second guessing could begin with why in the world. On this is a tie game right now. now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or worse. I mean, or, for, for the Vikes, or worse. Because. Man, when the when you're gonna punt it away, oh, I Boy, can't believe it. Traverse City needs to it. find new coaches because I tell no, you, I wouldn't go that far. But oh that my is, word! That is, uh, you know they call the timeout to make that decision. Here's Lou dropping back, going for two. He doesn't have any space. He's uh, bottled up. Now he's heaves it. He's got somebody. Oh. Man, just out of the reach. So Cadillac with a one point lead, four point six seconds left in the game. Crazy wow. turnaround. Cadillac's going to end up winning the Big North if they don't give up a, a run back, which i got to believe you're going to squib. But at the end of the day, uh, well, here, there's a, that's a good question. To what do you want to do on this kickoff? Because you know that they've got they've got something that they've practiced before you're where they've got it. a score. You're going to squib it. Well, even on a squib, you're not guaranteed anything. I kind of like a pop, like a short pop fly, like a like a 20-footer. But I don't think we work on that kind of stuff a whole lot. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to kick the thing out of bounds and make them set up a play from scrimmage at the 35 and get your uh, prevent defense out there. But either way, these guys just got to keep white shirts in front of them, get the ball on the ground, and then it's everybody's going to go over and ring the bell. What a Unbelievable. gift. Unbelievable. What an absolute gift. Holy crap. Well, that part of it was a gift, but you just you got to credit the, these guys. The, what you talked about is the resolve. That just no matter what happens, we're not going to give in. If this game ends in 4.6 seconds the way that it stands right now, that's all you can credit it to. There's just no other way to explain how you come out of that with just an impotent offensive effort in the second half. Nothing going on, and then all of a sudden get handed an opportunity at the end of the football game and go down and punch one in, dragging your tight end across the middle, which is the play, by the way, that I w wanted to see on fourth <laughs> and four two series ago, but we'll let that go. So, all right, oh. Andrew Remington set the kickoff. Cadillac now with a one-point lead. Another TC school goes down in flames if this holds up. Wow. It's 9.30. Shocked. I am just shocked. The crowd across the field is shocked. And as soon as this thing gets put on the ground, it's party time, baby. 4.6. All right, Andrew Remington. He does squib it. It's on the turf. Still oh. alive. Get that thing on the ground, fellas. Get it on the ground. Find the ball. So 33. Just corral it. Just corral it. There you go. And he's going to yes. get knocked out of bounds. Game oh, over. There it is. Big North Conference See you Championship. Later. All by themselves. Cadillac wins. Cadillac wins. Cadillac wins. Their second consecutive Big North Conference title in a row. Uncharacteristically fashionable by Cadillac. I, I, I cannot believe the play calling by Wooer and passing off the last two years uh, to just <laughs> give Cadillac this opportunity. But you heard it here. Cadillac wins by one, 15 to 14. Congratulations to the Cadillac Vikings, Jim Webb, Todd Baker. Uh, they're your champions again. They're going to go into the playoffs undefeated for the second straight year. We'll see what kind of noise we can make in Division Four. Have a good night. <laughs>